finally gonna actually build this damn engine. I'm so excited. So we're gonna make some room here on our workbench. This is our new shop. This is where we're gonna be doing a lot of the fun work on our cars. Let's move this bumper out of the way. Freshly baked cookies. <laughs> that is a life block. Not too bad, eh? So we decided to go with Manly H-beam connecting rods because of the really good reviews that people have had with these. They're pretty damn stout and really excited to run them. For the pistons, like most people do, they run Manly Platinum Series pistons. These are also pretty stout. So these are gonna last, you know, hopefully. I don't think we're gonna have any problems with uh, the engine blowing up again, so. Unless we have a bad tune and it detonates like crazy. And uh, who's tuning it? Me. I'm gonna get the crankshaft and crank it. What we decided to go with, it's a very basic setup. A lot of guys do it. And it's, in my opinion, all you really need for the street, unless you're going for like over 600 horsepower. The head, let's start with the head. It's completely stock, except for the upgraded valve springs. We went with a mild upgrade. We went with SuperTech 55 pound valve springs. And in my opinion, that's more than enough for what my goals are. We didn't decide to do any port work because that was kind of expensive. We didn't decide to upgrade the cams either because not necessary. Stock cams are pretty good for uh, around 600 horsepower if I'm not mistaken. The machine shop, Competition Automotive, shout out to them. They relapped the valves adjusted valve clearances, and we decided to let them take care of the head and do all the meticulous stuff. We got this block from a CX-7 with 160,000 kilometers on it. We decided to go with an 88 millimeter Manly Platinum Series piston. So they had to overbore the cylinders half a millimeter, 0.5 of a millimeter. So the stock bore is 87.5 millimeters, and the bore that we're going with is 88 millimeters. The stock sleeves, from what I've been reading, can handle about 600 horsepower. Anything past that, you run the risk of having them warp and all that kind of stuff. And you know, the sleeves are very thin in these things. But um, for our goals for the street, I don't think we're gonna have any problems. ARP L19 head studs, which a lot of people use, and we've upgraded to ARP 2000 main studs, which a lot of people use. Clevite for the mains and for the rod bearings. We got the crankshaft keyed, but the difference with this key job is that they didn't do the crankshaft pulley. Here's the keyway, it slides right in here. The sprockets themselves are keyed, so the sprockets slide onto it like this, like so, All right? And then the, uh, the crankshaft pulley is not keyed. So we do have to use a friction washer on the outer surface here and on the inner surface. But this is the main area that we're concerned with. We want to make sure the sprockets are keyed so we can't slip timing. The, uh, the pulley just runs accessories, so if it slips, it's not crucial to the engine's operation, right? Exactly. So when we do tighten the crank bolt, we're going to have to torque it to spec. We're going to have to do the 75 foot-pounds plus 90 degrees just to make sure that the crank pulley doesn't slip. This high-pressure fuel pump, we cleaned it out, upgraded the screen in there on the inlet of the pump to a stainless steel screen. We've got auto techs in here. So the oil squirters here, these are from the CX-7 block. We're gonna have to just clean these out with some brake cleaner. We got some assembly lube, which we're gonna be using a lot of. We got this from our engine builder. They gave it to us for free. Is it in this whole build, that's that's the most uh, breaking the bank kind of item. You're damn right. All right, the first thing we need to do is get this block on an engine stand. I bought this at Princess Auto when I had to do my engine, and it's come in handy. It's paid for itself by now. Oh yeah. Take the block. I've been working out. As you can tell, not even a hassle. It's aluminum. Put this piece on the block first, then lift the block into the stand. All right, let's put the head on and start it up. Brake clean for the win. Let's do it. Okay, so. He builds engines by the seashore? Look at these, these are the heavy duty wrist pins for the manly pistons. All right, piston assembly time. All right, let's see how this goes. Making sure it's clean. Grab a little bit of oil, just to make things go in easier. Couldn't really find any information on uh, what side these tangs should be on. So we're gonna use the manly facing the front. So that means that it says front based on the arrow and these are the intake valves. So front of the engine is gonna be on this side. 
So the manly is gonna be facing the front. To put these in, actually, I find a, a cool trick is you take the small screwdriver, and instead of going really deep, you just keep the screwdriver in this groove here. So it allows the pin, to, the clip to actually fall right into the, in place. Put it in on this side first. In that groove. There, we got the clip in on this one side, making sure it's clean in there. Take a little bit of oil. Pop some oil in here. Make it easy for the uh, wrist pin to go in. Put some oil into here where the wrist pin goes. I'm using my finger to feel for any debris, just to make sure there's no debris. So the front of the piston is right there. So Manly is gonna be facing the front. Slide this in real quick. To make sure it moves freely. And then put Manly in. Mr. Manly. Clearances, man. It's like a perfect fit. So we've got all the uh, rods and pistons assembled together. Our machine shop put the piston rings on for us because we don't have the uh, the tools for that. So we got the engine, uh, the block flipped over. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna clean these oil squirters and I'm making sure that these little springs inside, these check balls, that they open and close nice and easy. And you just clean it with some brake cleaner and make sure it's clean. These are the little eight millimeter bolts that hold the squirters in place. Building an engine is like building. <sighs> yeah. Just put the fastener in. Starting them off by hand first. I'm sure there's a torque spec for these, but uh, a lot of the bolts in this engine are going to be torqued by feel, by hand. The main portions that are going to need to be followed are the main studs, the head studs, the crank pulley bolt basically the main areas, but little things like this, we can go by hand and might go by feel. You guys ready for this? This is the first tightening of the first bolt of this build. Where's my breaker bar? Just kidding. And I snapped it. Imagine. I've done a lot of things. Immediately we have to drill out one of these fasteners for a freaking oil squirter. Let's not make any mistakes. Satisfied with that? Satisfied with that? I like this street. Satisfied. So we're gonna put the main bearings in now. We've cleaned these. Make sure there's no debris here. The thrust so, bearings are like one piece with that? Yeah, this is a thrust bearing. Okay. That's cool, man. So the ones with, with the groove are gonna be on the top. You can see the groove here? It says upper right there. Standard size bearings in our case. So just make sure it's clean, make sure there's no foreign material on there. So it's clean, we're gonna pop this in. I've never done this before. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So you, ideally, I think what you wanna do is feel here for like a, see, feel if it's higher up. This one's more like flush. So I'm gonna push this down a little. And just kind of move it back and forth on each side. Boom, 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 kind of deal. Just so it's sitting in there. So that's clean. We're gonna put the rest of the bearings in. That's that's the thing I think that is most important, guys, is you wanna make sure everything is clean when you're assembling this thing. Wow, that's a pretty tight fit. Very nice, very nice. Okay, does that look good? I don't know, I can't tell. Does that just like squeeze in there and stay there? I'm just so excited. So they line honed this at the machine shop. What that means is, is they tightened everything down and then they measured the out of roundness in this bore. And if it's out of round, they line on it. What they're saying is that when you upgrade to studs, it can warp the, the bore because it's more, I guess, more clamping force, which is why the machine shop went ahead and line honed it just to make sure everything is straight and round. Right? Just, guys, we, we don't, we, we're not really following instructions right now. We're just kind of going based off of so previous knowledge. Before. Julian has We've done this on his Jetta. Before. We can do this. We've winged it before? The Jetta's running, and uh, we, we were really sloppy with the Jetta. We winged Jetta it. had a lot of used parts in it, and it works fine. 
No, I'm kidding. Let's not use that. The jet is fine. It's perfect. It's fantastic. It's amazing. Full on performance, brand new parts, everything. We kind of tried to clean the crank with some brake clean and it pretty much dried the crank out with all this surface rust, I guess you could call it, but we're all good. We're gonna put a lot of this stuff on here. You just wanna coat the surfaces. You basically wanna have lubrication before the oil makes it there. Ah. So as soon as the oil pump gets oil to there, we're fine. This is just for like the initial startup. Mm, it feels nice and gelatiny. I like the green more than the red. You got green? Green's a nicer color. I have red. Oh. But it's the same company, right? Yeah, I'm just, just color wise. I don't know. Actually, no, mine's Permatex. Yeah, lube up the cramp as well. Cramp? Cramp as well. Especially because it's going to be a couple weeks before the car is running. We just want to make sure that it's lubricated and the thickness of it helps. If you're starting it up the same day, some people just use engine oil. Going in dry with no gloves. All right, well, moving forward from that conversation topic, let's go and uh, put the crankshaft in. Crank's going in, guys. Crank's going in. Let's see what happens. Ah, my finger. Okay, crank's in. Does it spin? Oh my god. It spins. It should spin like that, too, when we put the, the, top. the top on the gurgle. gurgle. Ooh, this is cool. Let's stop moving. Oh. Object in motion wants to stay in motion. Stationary object wants to stay stationary. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. This is the lower main bearings. See it says lower right there. We're gonna pop it in. I think they're all the same. Yep, they're all the same. We've made sure this is clean. Okay. Stick this right in the middle. Try to be as accurate as you can with placement. First time I've ever done that. It's fun, eh? It's fun because you feel like you're taking a massive risk everything, every step you take. Every time you do that with your fingers, you're pushing like hundreds of dollars into that. Yeah, these bearings are not cheap. No, bearings are not cheap. Every step you take could be the difference between a blown engine. The question is how much time is going to go by before you see all of this stuff again when you tear it down after it blows up? Hopefully a lot of mileage. Because I'll tell you what, when my balance shaft seized, I did not expect to be in that engine again two years later because I misshifted and blew it up again. First time wasn't a misshift blow up though, that balance shaft was out. Second time was all me. That was all me. Alright, we got the bearings in now. Mmm, it's hot sauce. Okay. This is f***ing our pizza. I don't know how much to use, but you know what? It's a perfect amount. Perfecto mundo. We're gonna have to use a lot of it too for the uh, camshafts on those buckets. As for the wrist pin, you've already oiled them. I don't think it's necessary right now. You could, what you could do is move it to the side here, put some assembly lube in there, and then just do this. I don't know if we need to for that. You think so? It can't hurt. I mean, assembly lube is free in comparison to the price of what you paid for these things here. You're right. You can put assembly loop on all the timing components too, the timing guides, basically put it on everything that rubs something. So you'll notice here by looking at the stud, this is the bottom of the stud and that's the top. There's less threads on the top, there's more threads on the bottom. So it's gonna be threaded in like this. You can also tell where the top is based on the Allen key on the top. Top, bottom. So I don't know how much to put on, I don't wanna to use too much of it. I don't think we need much for the bottom, to be honest. Just get it on there just to help it out. It's a queen of that and start again. I want to make sure it's torqued down properly. So it's got to be clean. Bottom out. I don't really know how much lube to put on the bottom threads. Just a dab will do that. Now, our machine shop said that uh, it probably won't be necessary to tap the threads or uh, chase the threads rather because they've already done a trial assembly. So we're not gonna 
chase the threads to make sure they're clean because we, we can feel it too. It doesn't feel gritty or anything. So we've hand threaded the, uh, we've cleaned and hand threaded the main studs into the block. We put some AR, a very small amount of ARP lube on the threads that stud into the block. Uh, and what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna take our Allen key and we're just gonna go just a little more, just like that until it bottoms out. Okay, right about there. There, okay. We don't wanna go too tight, but we're just making sure that it's fully bottomed out. Now, some people don't recommend this, but uh, I did a bit of reading. Some people do it, some people don't. Uh, I'm gonna give it a shot. Just a light extra turn, just on all the studs. My mallet, which is located. Try to make sure it bottoms out nice and flat. One way you can tell if it's straight or not is looking at the studs to see if they're straight with the hole, like centered in the hole. We verified that the threads are nice and clean. We're going to apply some more ARP uh, Ultra Lube here onto the threads. I think we can be pretty sparing with this. All right, guys. So we've got we've lubricated the the washer faces, the threads, and we're using quite a bit. So it's going to give us an accurate torque spec. And then we're going to put the nuts on, and we're going to follow the OEM torque sequence, following the ARP instructions for the uh, amount of torque, which is I believe 60 foot pounds. According to the instructions here, it says. Following the manufacturer's recommended torque sequence, tighten the nuts in three equal steps to 60 foot-pounds with ARP Ultra Torque Fastener Assembly Lubricant. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna follow the OEM torque sequence. We're gonna do 20 foot-pounds first, then 40 foot-pounds, then the final 60 foot-pounds. 20 foot-pounds. We've got our fancy schmancy torque wrench here. And it is a 12 millimeter, 12 point socket. So they want us to go by hand first, just bottom each of the bolts out, or sorry, the nuts rather. Our 20 foot pounds, we're gonna follow the torque sequence, OEM torque sequence. So let me pull that out right now on my phone. I'm gonna start with this one here. See how this feels. We just realized guys, we were doing the torque sequence, but we actually should have been doing it from this side of the engine. But um, since we did it from this side of the engine, we're just gonna keep doing it the same way. Just keep an eye when you're following the uh, owner, the, sorry, the engine manual, that you uh, are aware of which side of, is which when you're tightening everything down. So we're gonna keep following the way that we've been doing it. The important thing is that we're tightening from inside to outside. So we're at 40 foot pounds now. foot pounds this is our final pass and then we'll double check it again after okay guys so we're gonna do the balance shaft elite here we've got a cork sport balance shaft elite kit and we're gonna put the plug in while we can so this goes like this like so I think we should have put this in before but uh, we're gonna have to make do oh it blocks an oil passage yeah it blocks an oil passage to the balance shaft assembly I put a little bit of oil in that seal there so we're just gonna tighten that by hand to a comfortable amount. It's kind of freaky. 
How tight am I supposed to go with that? It's just blocking oil. That's, that's probably more than tight enough. Yeah, you're right. That's just good enough. Okay, guys, so we put the oil pump on here. It's brand new. Making sure that it spins nicely. This looks like a refurbished pump. We got it from Edge Autosport. I think most of these pumps are going to be refurbished. Um, but they're 10 millimeter bolts, four of them. And um, we're going to tighten these down. There's a torque spec, but we're going to uh, we're just going to go by hand on it. Most people would not agree with that. I have torque specs. I'm going to take a quick peek at those torque specs. But these size bolts, they're they're tiny, right? So they're, it's not going to be super tight. Um, let me see what these torque specs are. I just have to scroll through this on mazdaspeeds.org. So the torque spec says you tighten these bolts in two steps, and it says eight to twelve newton meters in step one, and then in step two is 17 to 23 newton meters, which equates to 13 to 16 foot-pounds. So to me, that is barely any torque, and I don't have a torque wrench that goes that low. So it's halfway between a bird burp and a squirrel fart. Exactly, so I'm just gonna go even around with this, and I'm slowly gonna work it down in a sequence until I feel satisfied with the security of it. I don't think we need to go much more than that. Maybe you should use a torque wrench. How about that? Let me see what the uh, fancy torque wrench is, man. You're right. Let's try it out. What was the newton meters? 17 foot pounds. Was it? 23. Let me see. 23. Short term memory is completely shot. 23 newton meters. Okay. So let me uh, set it to 23 newton meters. Don't you wish you owned that instead of borrowed it? Okay. Oh yeah, so you're way above 23 newton meters. We're good, we're good. I go by hand first, then I check with the torque wrench. <laughs> oh, okay. That one needed to go a little more. Nice. Oh, okay. Oh. That freaked me out. Okay. That's enough, that's enough. That's enough. It's good. Don't, don't fight fate, man. Okay. Okay, I'm turning it off. We've got the oil squirters in. We've got the crankshaft in. We've got the main girdle torqued down. We've got the oil pump torqued down. We've got the balance shaft plug tightened down. I think now we are ready to put some pistons and rods in here. So we're gonna flip this over. Like so. Oh, okay, I got the pin. I'm, I'm purposely breathing heavily. This is not how I normally breathe. Okay, there we go. Pop it in. All right. So we're gonna put some oil in these cylinders. We're gonna make sure these cylinders are clean. Okay. Shit, I can't even get my hand in there. How clean does it have to be in here? Uh, as clean as it was before you went and put a dirty rag in it. <laughs> it's not that dirty, come on. We've been using this. Dude, it was so clean before, man. It was spotless. Engine oil? I would just use engine oil. Because the rings have to seat, because these are brand new uh, rings, brand new home Ooh. cylinders. So wow. the whole point of this is to kind of get them to seat in the cylinder when you start it up. Feels good. Alright, just give it a small coat. No, I'm going to give it a lot of coat. I'm going to give it a lot. Immediately that oil is gonna burn and then carbon up your valves, like instantly. No, I got an old catch can. It's already in the cylinder. I got an EGR. What's the catch can? You're gonna do yeah, everything. But, yeah, but it's in the cylinder. Yeah, so you're gonna, you're gonna burn not, it right it's there. It's not on top of the valves. It's in the cylinder, it's past the valves. Oh, you, but you're gonna carbonize your cylinders. Exhaust cylinders? You know what you're saying. <laughs> Exhaust valves. You're gonna carbonize your, your head. The whole combustion chams. Listen, bud. Tops. I'm just here to make fun times, okay? Man, I'm I need around too much. I need more oil. Can I just dump it? Oh, this is great for the hands. Great for the skin. <laughs> we had a little bit of an issue. We were trying to figure out what to torque these down to, these rod bolts. The recommendations for final assembly are 60 foot pounds for a 3 8 ARP 2000 bolt with a UHL of 
1.5 inches. So our bolts are 1.5 inches. We weren't sure if they were 3 8 or 7 16 because the head of the bolt appears to be a 7 16 but the actual diameter of the middle of the bolt is 3 8 And since ours is a 1.5, um, after a bit of reading, we decided we're gonna go with 62.5. And this says bolt diameter too. It doesn't say bolt head pattern, so. Exactly, okay. So that's what we've decided on, 62.5 foot-pounds for the rod bolts. Now we're gonna put the bearings in here, the rod bearings. So are these both the same, Julian, top and bottom? They are identical. When I got mine, they weren't even boxes like this. They were just in a big row. Kind of dusty. Those Molly ones. Yeah, they're really dusty. So just make sure they're super clean, front and back. Make sure this is clean here. Okay. Line up the tang with it as best I can, and then push this in. There. The bottom one here is in. Nice and flush. We're gonna do the same thing for all the others. Make sure there's no dust. Tang. Tang, 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 tang. And then just pop it in. Nice and easy. <coughs> Excuse me. This is a Wiseco, Wiseco, 88 millimeter s piston ring compressor sleeve. And uh, we're gonna use, put some oil in here like so. And we're gonna install the pistons into the blowers, the blowers with this. We're gonna put the rods in on uh, cylinders one and four. I'm gonna get some assembly lube on this bearing here. I'm gonna get some down onto that journal. Make sure we got oil in this thing. Makes it easier for it to go in. Do we need to do the piston as well? Probably oil around the ring area. Get, get the piston skirts a bit. They also want you to space out the ring gaps evenly. Yeah, 120 degrees or so. Yeah, or something like that. So I'll just do it evenly. I mean, they're gonna move around, I think at least. Maybe not, who knows. I don't know what goes on in those engines. Get this into the sleeve here. I've never done this before, so it's kind of new for me. It's going in. Oh, you're in. You're in. Hey, that's good. I can see clearly now the piston's down. Man, what are we hitting? Couldn't tell you. If we had the other block, I could see it through here while we were hitting. Getting this rod in was a little bit of a challenge because if the rod's not completely straight, centered on the wrist pin, it can the rod can get wedged on the crankshaft. So you gotta make sure that when you're getting it in, you try to keep the, um, the connecting rod on the wrist pin as centered as possible. So we're gonna just loosely put the, uh, the rod caps on, on this cylinder. I'm gonna add a little bit more of this. Where are the numbers, bud? Because the rod cap, the numbers have to match up. There's only numbers on this side. Three, four, five, zero. Three, four, five, zero. Perfect. So we're good there. So numbers to numbers. A little bit of assembly lube here. That's spread out. 3550, we're gonna put it down like this. That dowel goes on nicely. Yeah. And those are kind of tough to get on. You may have to like dead blow hit it. Just by hand, we're just getting these rod bolts snug. And now we're gonna put uh, cylinder four. Since cylinder it's already four. bottom dead center. Okay. okay. fail I've ever seen. I'm terrible at this, man. <laughs> All right, number four. All right, pop it in. What we want to do, we want to make sure that this is as centered as it can be, okay? So it doesn't bind up on us. So front is that way. The arrow is going to be facing that way. And for the top ring, I'm going to face it at 12 o'clock. Second ring, I'll face it at uh, seven o'clock. And then for the oil control ring, I'll face it at uh, it's five o'clock, <clears throat> four o'clock. Hard to tell at this point. You get a little bit of oil on here. Hope it doesn't rain. Oh God. Ooh. So nervous right now. Cause it rains. We're inside. It's a lot of money. It's a lot of money involved. It's okay. It's all good though. All right. Put that pistone in the cylinder. 
Oil in, oil in, oil in. Is that uh, 5.30? 5.20. That's gonna change the torque spec of the ARP 2000 uh, <laughs> cat bolt. I will. <laughs> That's all right, they recommend 30 weight, but I don't have any 30 weight on me. Don't worry about it. It's gonna be it, man. That's how the engine blows. Joking, knock on uh, wood. Uh, well, what was that? It felt like it got stuck, but it went in, so. Okay, we're in. Give her a tipsy turny. Assembly lube. Go, 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 one, go. All right. That's another one in. Let's get the cap on. Now take the ERP 2000 studs and dip them in some oil. Bolts. ERP bolts, 2000 sorry, bolts. bolts. You can teamwork this. 62.5 foot pounds is going to be the end result. This is a very nice place. It's going to be a nice little spot for us the to work. Focus on this camera sucks really bad. But it's a Canon. The nice side of the camera. It's me. But it's actually a really old camera. But it's good. Not really old, but it's old. Old enough. I'm going to stop recording now. Just snug it. Rambling. Snug it for now. So what we're going to do now is rotate the crank 90 degrees. Um, no, 180 degrees to bring the cylinders two and three portions up to the bottom dead center um, where one and two is right now one and four is right now and that's gonna allow us to put the pistons in see what happens that's just the rings right yeah it's the rings on the uh, new home cylinder wall After a couple cycles, it'll smooth out. But don't, don't, like, let's start up do that. Very carefully. Slide this through. Okay. Doing nice and easy here. Rod in the middle of the wrist pin. Go in there nice and straight. Nice and straight. Get it as straight as you can by eye. Wow, it's a diesel Land Rover. Timing chance. Are you serious? Yeah. Dude, that's a diesel. That's timing chance. That's a fing diesel. That's man. timing chance. No way. Yes, it that is. That thing's gonna blow up like tomorrow, man. Timing chance. So loose. Oh, that sounds so horrible. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going in. Oh, God. Oh. Something's binding, sort of. But we're centered. Ah, uh, we're in. We're in, guys. Look at that. This sleeve is wicked. That's right. beautiful. That's way better than the spring clampy thing I bought that lets this slice you open. I think it was a pain, wasn't it? Okay, ah, so okay. flip it over now. Yeah, flip it over. We, we're getting and we'll this guide, We will guide the lower <gasps> half. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> There's a lot of money involved here. That's why we're kind of paranoid right now. And we had never done this before, so kind of all new to us, right? Just to make sure it's sort of bottomed out there. Okay, it's the last cylinder. Yeah, this is uh, cylinder number three now. I've already got some assembly lube on the journal there. I'm gonna make sure that this is straight on the wrist pin, right in the middle so it doesn't kink on us like it did on the first cylinder we tried. Pop the skirts in. the engine over. Gonna do the same thing. Oh! You okay, man? You're freaking out a lot. I know. I know. I am freaking out a lot, man. It's a lot of money here. Same thing. If I'm I gonna screw go up. The engine. I'm going to hammer the piston up. He's going to make sure that it uh, doesn't score and goes properly around the, uh, the crank journal here. 
All right, so I got some Luber. Same thing as before. What side's the numbers on? That side. Let me get these on. Just like that. Just gonna lightly tap on it with the extension that I have here. Put some force on it, just to make sure it's against the crank journal. Feel it. That's it. I'm gonna dip the bolts into oil here. Find your bubbles on it. Sixty-two point five foot pounds. All right. Should we do it in three stages? Twenty, forty, sixty again. Yeah, let's do that. 20, 40, 60. So that's what we're gonna do, guys. We're gonna do it in three stages. 20, 40, 60. Or 62.5. It says 20. between 60, between 55 and 65 as the, the range that they give. Is that so we're gonna go to like 62 or something. Is that for our size? For our size, right? Yeah, 55, 65, yeah. So there's a 10, 10 foot pound kind of window. We're gonna go to 62-ish, around there. So these ARP rod bolts are uh, an 11 millimeter, 12 point socket. We're using a 3 8 size. Like, what is it called? The adapter? No, not the. <laughs> it's a 3 8 ratchet, and we're using an 11 millimeter 12 point socket. There's 20. This thing's moving. We gotta, we gotta hold this thing steady. Can you put your foot on? Okay, I'm coming. Let me just make sure we're at 20 here. 20. Okay, so now we're gonna go up to 40. Go further. More. Okay, right there. There's 40. Make sure we're at 40. Sixty-two, right? Yeah. 0.5. Well, I can't do 0.5, so I'm gonna have to do 62. Okay. This doesn't have 0.5 increments. Okay, what but this is where it's a gut. I'm kidding. Oh, that's tight. That's plenty tight. You sure? So ideally when you're torquing this stuff, you want to go slow and you want to keep it in motion until you reach your torque spec. That's the proper way to torque stuff. Okay, so we've got the pistons halfway down. And the reason for this is just to give us some clearances when we put the cams in. Because once we bolt those cams down, they're going to open some valves. And because there's no timing chain selecting the crank to the head. We just want to avoid any risk of a valve being pushed down and contacting a cylinder before we time it. So we, we have head studs, right? Mm -hmm. L19 you said? We've got ARP L19 head studs. These ones here, you will not find them. I mean, we couldn't find them, my engine builder and I, we could not find them in ARP's catalog. You can buy them off Edge Autosport, which is where we got ours. They're more expensive than the ARP 2000 head studs. And a lot of people don't actually recommend the ARP 2000 head studs. They recommend either the L19s or the H11s because those ones are way more reliable. So definitely go with what works, not with what doesn't. All right guys, so I'm cleaning each one of these L19 studs. And again, just like the main studs, we've got an Allen key at the top there. And uh, we're gonna put some ARP ultra torque lube here on the bottom. We've already chased <coughs> the threads in the head. Not really chased, but we've cleaned up one of these and then we went around and made sure that it goes in smoothly on all of them. So that's one way to do it. And he's not gonna go crazy with tightening this stud down. He's just gonna make it kind of like snug. So the Allen key is mainly just to kind of help it get down there. And then when he gets to the bottom, he's just gonna give it a tiny little uh, just to make sure it's seated. Just like that. And then we do that nine more times. And that's gonna hold in all the explosions of the engine. It's 
See, this, this, I don't know if this is right or wrong, but some people give it a little extra, some people just go by hand, I don't know. Like, do you guys have any opinions on this? Like, is it, a, is it a good idea to go a little extra or not? Because either way, it's happening in our case, but. Yeah, ask in the comments, but uh, regardless, it'll be too late for us, but it'll be good to know. This is a bit of a tedious process putting an engine together because you want to make sure that your $8,000 worth of parts and finances don't just get thrown out the window. And we're talking Canadian money too, by the way. Yeah, that's why it's so it's expensive. Like, it'll might be a little cheaper in the US. It was like 8,000 Canadians, what, like 5,000 US? I can't remember, it's like 30% difference, I think. You already tightened this one, you already. I gave them a bit of like a, a like a bit of a uh, and that's it. A bit of a uh. Yeah, just uh, the mom, the, 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 I can't talk. I oomped them in, oomped. See, I, apparently we're not supposed to. Maybe I just shouldn't make up words and just stick to the, you know, the vocab I was taught. Look at that, look at how clean that is. You could eat off that. You could like fill these bowls with different kinds of soups and then go to town. So now what? And then as your soup is getting lower, you can turn the crank and then move the soup higher. Uh, you just gotta take over, man. You know like, what? I feel like it's gonna be hard. I feel like it's gonna be hard to get the ARP lube on these threads once the head's on. So I think it might be a good idea to um, put the lube on now. What do you think? I think you should put the head gasket on now. Yes. Then the lube. Otherwise, okay. you're gonna put that lube on, and then the head gasket's gonna get all luby, and then you're gonna contaminate the area where the head gasket's supposed to seal. Okay. So now, auto sport. Take a Take a microfiber, yeah. spray it with Bright Clean to take the oil off of this surface yeah. that the head gasket's gonna seal on. It's a great idea. Okay, let me go over my hand here just to feel it, massage it. joke but he's actually serious he thinks he's doing something beneficial I am I'm just I'm blessing it I'm blessing it you know you gotta feel you gotta give it the energy that it deserves look in between here there might be a little piece of dust that I'm just kind of getting rid of that the microfiber will leave lint behind The head gasket, please. Okay. Head gasket. Yes. Should we put a little more oil in the cylinders? No. No, we're good. Let me spread the oil that's already there. Does that look good? Nice and clean. It's pretty clean to me, right? Okay, so it looks like it goes like this. Right? Only goes one way. Only goes one way. All right. It goes two ways, but I mean, you see things not lining up. Head gasket looks yeah. like it's on. It kind of looks like it. It, looks it like might it. not be on, but it is. And gasket's on, ready to pop the head on. Okay, so all the head studs now have the ARP super lubricant, and Eric has the head in his hand. And you gotta make the two together. Gotta get a better grip on it, that's what I gotta do. Super clean on that side, and it's ready. I'm getting stabbed. Okay. Okay, okay. Good, perfect, perfect. Perfect. There we go. That's it. We've got the washers there, all lubed up. We figured since there's lube on top of the washer already, there's no real need for us to lubricate the bottom of the nuts, because the threads are already lubricated as well. So what we're gonna do now is just use a magnet, get them started onto the stud, and then we'll start it off by hand, and then follow speed performance's torquing sequence instructions. I'm gonna bottom, uh, bottom them out just till they stop. So we've got them all hand tight. We're gonna follow speed performance's instructions here. They want us to do it in the OEM sequence, tightening sequence to 35 foot-pounds, then loosen it, then tighten it again in sequence to 35 foot-pounds, then loosen them again, then tighten it again to 35 foot-pounds, then loosen it a final time, and then do a final tightening in a three-step sequence. 25 foot-pounds, then 45 foot-pounds, 
then a final torque of 70 foot pounds. So that's what we're gonna do. So we've got our tightening, tightening sequence here on our, on our screen. Tightening. And uh, we're gonna start with 35 foot pounds as per speed performance. Five. Yeah, this thing is precise. All right, I'm gonna turn this off for now, and we're gonna loosen it and repeat it two more times at 35 foot pounds. I'm gonna loosen it in a sequence as well, which is the reverse of what we normally do. Starting from outside. And you want to keep it moving until it stops, right? Until it clicks or buzzes. Because if it stops completely, to get it to move again, you may exceed the torque limit. So the final one, here we go, 70 foot pounds. Oh man, all right, not too bad, not too bad. Just gotta keep it moving, keep it nice and fresh. I'm gonna shut my shelf. I'm kidding. I'm gonna shut your shelf. I'm gonna shut my shelf. I'm gonna shut your shelf. You have to clean your shelf off. Look <laughs> oh, good. Too funny, man. Oh shit, why is this moving? Just don't spit on me. You look like a kid just trying to shit. Trying to shit? Like, like kids who like go in the corner and try to shit like in their diaper. I feel young, they're, man. They're trying to hide it. So they feel young. I don't feel they old. Have a, a very like straight facial expression, but there's determination. <laughs> I can't wait to shit. That's different. That's not what I was expecting. Damn it. That wasn't the face. Distracting me. Mm, I'm sorry, man. That's the face. <laughs> That's ten. Should right? we double check? Yeah, double we check. should double check because I haven't been paying attention. Okay, so we've uh, placed the cams down but there's assembly lube on the uh, little flat tappets there, um, like the little buckets, and then the cam lobes, the journals on the cam also have assembly lube, and uh, now we're just putting these little uh, clamps. These are, these are <laughs> caps. Little, little caps. Cam shaft the cam caps, shaft caps, if you want to call them that. The but uh, caps. we made sure these are clean, right? These are clean. We put some assembly lube <laughs> right here on the journal. Um, did you fart? <laughs> I farted. You farted again. I get. Can't help it, man. Just breathe. Anyways, um, so we're putting these in. We're gonna tighten them all down. No mask can. And stop as that. you can see, it's getting a little bit darker out. So we don't know how much more time we're gonna be able to work today. But uh, even if we have to stop early today, that's fine because in this video, you guys will not notice transitions in time because. Yeah. Also, Eric forgot to, forgot to buy our TV sealant, so we can't actually put the valve cover on, or the oil pan, or the side diamond cover. Yeah. So, but now the next uh, in yeah. the next scene, uh, we don't have to explain it because you'll just see what we do. So, that's it. Okay, Eric's gonna share some bad news with you guys. All right, so here, here's some bad news, guys. Um, we basically did all this work, put everything together, and we realized that we forgot to put these dowels in that are supposed to go into the block and made up to the head. So now the head could be slightly misaligned. So we have to so take, we the, gotta head take the head off again. Luckily, we can reuse the head studs. Hopefully we won't have any issues. And then we're gonna pop these in, retorque everything down, and then continue where we left off with the cams. Okay guys, so we're back from putting the, taking the head back off and putting the head back on with the dowel pins. We now have all the caps on. Uh, there's a lot of assembly lube in this situation here and we're ready to tighten down the camshafts. We're on mazdaspeeds.org here and there's a, a thread that basically outlines all the torque sequences and torque specs, so that's really helping us out a lot. Right now we're gonna follow the uh, tightening order for the camshaft caps. So, start in the middle here. The foot pounds, uh, torque spec is 11 to 12 foot pounds, but you do it in two steps. The first step is 49 to 79 inch pounds. 
and the second step is 11 to 12 foot pounds. So realistically, I'm gonna go by hand on it, but I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna follow the order. So this one here first, slowly bring it down. I'm just gonna get them all snug first in the same sequence. Okay guys, so last week we had finished putting the cams on. Now this week we're gonna start putting the engine more together. Uh, we're gonna start timing it now. So what we need to do first is we need to get the camshafts at TDC as well as the crankshaft at TDC. So if you're not sure what the position is of the cams in relation to the pistons, what we like to do is we like to rotate the engine so that all pistons are halfway down the cylinder so we don't run the risk of uh, contacting valves to pistons when rotating the cams to get it to TDC. So before we get into that, I just wanna take you guys over here. Um, we ended up buying um, the Stage 3 engine rebuild kit from Edge Autosport. You can check it out on their website um, to see exactly what it comes with. Uh, one thing we recommend is to buy additional friction washers for the cams, new ones, as well as new camshaft uh, sprocket bolts because those do not come with the rebuild kit, the Stage 3 rebuild kit. So check it out on their website. They've got a, a description there of what it comes with and you can determine what exactly you want to buy additionally. So now that we know the pistons are halfway down the center of the bore, this gives us space so we don't hit the valves. So we're gonna get the intake camshaft and the exhaust camshaft in the correct position. And that position is where the exhaust cam and the intake camshaft lobes are facing each other at 45 degrees. So you can see we're almost here with the exhaust camshaft. Now we need to rotate the intake camshaft into that position. So, let me get that over there. Rotate it a bit. This, we're using a 24 millimeter wrench right now. Um, it's a little bit big, but it does the job. So you can see they're at 45 now, but we're gonna have to take our timing tool, camshaft locking plate, and we're gonna have to slide it in here. So you might have to wiggle the cams just to get things to line up. You see these slots here? There's a slot here and a slot here, and this is just a flat plate. So it's gonna slide into it and hold both cams in place. So wiggle this one in right here. There's that one. This one here. See that? See how we're lined up? And if you take a look at the camshaft lobes on cylinder one, they're facing each other at 45 degrees. Okay, so now we're gonna get our TDC pin in to the back of the block. We have to rotate the crankshaft until the piston in cylinder one is at top dead center. So I'm going to rotate, I'm gonna put this in first. That threads in right there. Make sure it's all the way threaded in. I'm gonna rotate this. There we go. You can see that we've contacted the TDC pin. Counterweight, counterweight on the crankshaft has contacted the TDC pin. Okay, so we're gonna pause on timing right now, and we're actually gonna put the oil pan on first, simply because um, the timing cover actually bolts into the oil pan on this side here. So we wanna make sure that we don't have any uh, oil leaks. So we're gonna put the oil pan on first, but before we put the oil pan on, we need to tap the oil pan right here um, for the TurboSmart oil pressure regulator return line. The reason why we're running a Turbo Smart oil pressure regulator is because the BNRS4 was smoking. We had some issues with smoke. So um, Brian at BNR recommended we give this a try and that's exactly what we're gonna do. So let's go ahead and tap a hole right here and then we'll go from there. Hang on. Just fitting up stuff. This is the Corksport balance shaft lead baffle and uh, we're gonna have to remove these bolts, remove this piece, remove these bolts, remove this piece, and then reuse the bolts to install that. We're not gonna put this in yet because it'll be blocking our hole that we're gonna tap. We're gonna tap it right here, right there, and it's gonna go into the oil pan here. This is our fitting. So this is gonna be basically sitting right here, and we're gonna put this nut on the inside of the oil pan and we're gonna thread this in, and this is gonna be for the return, the return line on the Turbo Smart oil pressure regulator. Made a little hole there, I did this, little locator. There we go. Ooh, it's a loud bell ring sound. Now we know where we're drilling. I'm gonna drill it to half an inch on this step drill bit, because 9 16 is gonna to be too big. That's the size we wanna be at, so if we go to half an inch, we can then tap the threads.
about there. Oh, lots of filings. Okay. And that's why we do this before we put it on. Yeah. Get all these filings off the table here. Otherwise, we're going to contaminate our elegant timing components. Let's do some tapping. So we've got our hole tapped right here, as you can see. And this piece right here is gonna thread into it, like so. All right. Once it bottoms out, we're gonna put some, uh, a large amount of thread sealant, oil resistant thread sealant, and then screw the nut on, like so. But to make more room, we wanna clean up the oil pan a little bit better. We're gonna take these uh, plates off, because we have to take them off anyway for the uh, balance shaft. So I'm gonna take this off, it's 12 millimeter bolts. Okay, it's kind of tight. You're gonna have to do this on the ground. Now, from what I've been reading, a balance shaft delete is required when upgrading to ARP 2000 main studs because they protrude. Get rid of some of the carbon buildup and the filings. This is our thread sealant right here. It's a uh, Permatex high temperature thread sealant. And um, we use this on our sixth port kit. It's good for oil and stuff like that and fuel. So this should hold up. We're gonna put all of that thread sealant onto these threads where it mates up to the uh, oil pan, as well as on the nut and where the nut mates up to the inside of the oil pan. We want a lot because we do not want an oil leak here. Something like that, spread it out. Thread that in. You can see that the thread sealant is kind of oozing out. That's fine because we're going to bottom it out. You can see that. That should seal up quite nicely. I'm going to add some more thread sealant to the inside of the threads right here. Uh, I think it's enough, man. Really? Yeah. If you really want it to be sealed, maybe put some RTV on it. I can put some RTV where this, uh, this nut mates up to the pan around there. I can put some RTV there. Okay, let's see if I can spread this out a little bit. I really don't want to have any oil leaks, so I think the more precautions I can take right now with the oil pan off, the better. So I don't want to go too tight with That's this. That's good. That's good. Three threads holding that whole thing on. I would stop there. Now, tighten this one on. And then the gasket maker is going to hold it in place too, so. And remember, this is just a return. This is just a return. Just like that. Huh. Now let's get our socket all messy. Maybe just wipe off the excess. Yeah, I'm gonna wipe the excess off. Okay. Cork sport baffle. There's our tap. I don't want to go too tight because I want to break it. And there's the inside. It's all cleaned up in there. That should be good. Now, we clean the oil pan, we blow it in with air, no debris. We're gonna take our baffle plate and we are going to think about how it goes. I think it goes like this, like that. They say to use some thread locker and to tighten down the bolts to 20 to 25 foot pounds. So we're just gonna go by hand or we're gonna use a little bit of red thread locker, just a little dab. I like how every single time we uh, we're about to pass in something, we list the torque spec and it's like, all right, so we're gonna do this by hand. Yeah. All right, so it's 25 foot pounds, so we're gonna go by hand. Okay, so it's 116 <laughs> foot pounds, so we're gonna go by hand. <laughs> So just a little line. This is red, so this is strong stuff. So we're just gonna, that's it. I doubt that's gonna come loose. Yeah, the biggest issue right now is that the ceiling flange for the timing cover is on hard concrete. It's getting really like, Perturbed right now. Don't worry about that. He's right. He's actually 100% right. I shouldn't be doing it this way. 
Should we put in like a piece of cardboard down or something? I probably over torqued it, but that's okay. It's my problem. My engine, my problem. That thread locker is gonna hold, man, I'll tell you that much. Okay, now that we've got the baffle in place, we're gonna go ahead and install the oil pickup tube. We're gonna tighten those bolts down, make sure you got a new seal on there, like so. And then once this is on, I believe we can put the oil pan on with some gasket maker. All right, time to squirt. Put the oil pump squirter, I mean, oil pickup tube. O-rings on there? Yep, make sure the O-rings on there. These are small fasteners, they don't need to be too tight. So we're gonna clean off the surfaces, the mating surfaces between the oil pan and the block. Just gonna take some brake clean. Make sure there's no oil and it's dry. going overboard here with this stuff. Probably don't need to go around the bolt holes, but we'll do it anyways. Flatten it out. Even it out. Here's our oil pan. This is where the rear main seal is gonna sit, so we're gonna have to put some of this gasket maker on after once we install the rear main. Make sure the holes line up. Ooh. Alright. Juicy. Hold it right there. Actually, go get me a bowl. Yeah. Go get right. me a bowl. I like that. Here's a clean bolt. Give me another one. Here's another clean bolt. Give me another one. Here is a, another clean bolt. All right, guys, now we're just gonna put all the bolts in and tighten them down nice and evenly. By hand. Okay, so what we did is we temporarily put the timing cover on with a couple bolts, and that allows us to make sure that the oil pan is lined up perfectly because we don't want the oil pan to go on misaligned and then we can't get these fasteners in. And it also allows us to make sure that the oil pan is flush with the side of the block so that the timing cover makes a nice perfect seal here and then we'll take the timing cover back off. It's just got like a couple of fasteners in there. Okay, and the torque spec is uh, one Eric hand. I'm gonna go from inside to out. All right, the oil pan is on and now it's time for timing. Everything's tight, everything's tight. We've lined up the oil pan. Hopefully we are gonna be good and not have any leaks here. Okay, flip this back around. Here's the pin. Oh, Please, sorry. sorry. Oh, did you put it in? Is I that fell, one? I fell in the wrong hole. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. We've cleaned up our exhaust camshaft sprocket. Now we're going to assemble it, put our bolt through, put our friction washer on there, and install it on to make sure these surfaces are nice and clean as well. We're just going to hand thread it in. Make sure it sits flush on top of the cam. that all right snug okay all right brand new VVT put it down on our camshaft bolt put our friction washer on there make sure that surface is clean okay we are on all right, guys, we got a little problem here. We lost the pin for the tensioner. So you know what we'll do? Put the guides on, put the chain on, the sprockets on, and we'll put the tensioner on last and we'll have to squeeze it. So what we did, we just cleaned off the crankshaft area. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna grab one of our friction washers, crankshaft friction washers right here, 
Try not to touch the face of it with your fingers. Just gonna slide it over until it bottoms out. Okay, so we're bottomed out there. Now, we're gonna grab our oil pump sprocket. This is the one that has more of a lip to it right here. It's longer, more of a protrusion. And we're gonna clean it first. Use a little bit of compressed air. If you have. We're gonna take our keyway, which is right here. I'm gonna put it in right there. Slide the oil pump sprocket on. Oh, where is it? Where's the hole? A little stiff, okay. So it's pressed up against the friction washer and it's locked in place. Next, we're gonna take our timing chain sprocket, clean it off. Compressed air once again. Another friction washer? No, we're not gonna put a friction washer in between the two because there's a keyway in the way and it's not necessary. Got it. But we will have to put a friction washer on the front side right here because the crank pulley's not heat. Ah. Friction washer's going on. Sounds crunchy. And basically the crank pulley's gonna sit up against it, but we're not gonna put the crank pulley on yet. Right now, we're at TDC here, the pin is touching and the camshafts are locked in place at TDC in the correct orientation with the camshaft lobes on cylinders one facing each other at 45 degrees. Um, you know what I just realized? We have to take this off. And this has to go on as one assembly. That on like so. Align this up. Because it's keyed now, so we can't, we can't spin it freely, so I have to figure out the orientation. I think there's this line here that guides you. Something like that. See? Bingo, bango. Bingo. I'm just gonna put the bolt on so it doesn't fall off. Just hand tight for now. Let's put the guide on and the tensioner. This little one here, it's gonna go on to the right. It's good. Tensioner now. I'm gonna go like this. Hook this onto the bolt that we just tightened, compress it, let it rest against the chain. Now we're gonna put the alignment bolt in, to hold it in place, which is also an eight millimeter. Nice and straight. Again, it doesn't have to be too tight. They're small fasteners, so. Okay, it is a good idea to apply assembly lube to these areas here. So I'm gonna squirt some in after I install it. We're gonna put the guide in now for the oil pump. Again, these are eight milliliter bolts. They don't need to be too tight. That's it. So to tighten the oil pump sprocket, we're giving this a shot. Since we are now keyed, and we have our TDC pin in there, we're gonna use this to hold it. Now, it might not be the best way to do it, but we're gonna see if we can actually get it to, to work. I don't believe the torque spec is too excessive on this. You can see the chain is... I think what happened there was... Oh, the uh, chain skipped. The chain skipped. The chain skipped so, on the chain. That's terrifying. That is terrifying. The bolt. Oh god. <laughs> this is just freaking. All right. Out. Next step is take the oil pan off, remove the oil pump, and then drill it out. Oh god! It skipped again. I think it's pretty good though. We're gonna use this punch, which is stronger. I think it's tight enough to be honest. Let's see what 22 foot pounds actually is. It's barely anything. So we already over tightened it. So now that we got the uh, oil pump chain tensioner, guide, and sprocket installed properly. We're gonna go ahead and put our timing chain sprocket onto the crankshaft. And then we're gonna put our friction washer on. Dang. I'm 
gonna put some assembly lube on this guide on the right side, the right side guide. Take some hardware, line this up, put a bolt in, and have a good time. Bottom them out with my, and I'm gonna tighten them by hand. What we're gonna do is we're actually gonna put the chain on. Ooh. So this is gonna be interesting because the crank is keyed, so we can't spin everything freely. So these can actually spin freely. So these are the only way for us to adjust tension on the chain, even. Pull this out just a bit. Grab the chain. Go like that. Try to feed the chain where the guide goes around the guide. It's a bit rigid. Okay, we're in. I'm pulling the tension, or the slack, out of the right side. Getting it lined up. And I'm bringing this up, and you can see that that is how it's going to sit. So you're aiming for some nice tightness up here. Yeah. This is still loose, these are still loose. We haven't tightened the cams down yet, or the cam sprockets, rather. The keyway, you can see, is lined up with the final sprocket. Friction washer's on there. Now we're gonna get, we're gonna let it go for a sec. We're gonna get our guide. We're gonna make sure it's clean. Assembly lube. Assembly lube. For the initial startup. Put a little on here too. Spread it out a little bit. Pull this like this. See this pin here? Guide's gonna slide onto the pin, like that. And this is when we would put the tension on. So we're gonna grab the tensioner. Like we said, we lost the pin for the tensioner, so we gotta compress the tensioner. Give me that other bolt over there. Thank you. We did it, guys. We absolutely did it. That's good. It's locked in place. I don't know if they go too tight, but I'm paranoid. Spending a lot of money here. Okay, so now that we've got the chain on, the guides, sprockets, oil pump, everything's tight. These are loose, right? We can still move these freely. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna make sure that the crankshaft is fully bottomed out. Because sometimes when you're doing all this stuff, sometimes the crankshaft likes to come off of its, uh, off out of TDC. So right now we just wanna make sure we're bottomed out. Okay, we're touching the pin. Now, what we're gonna do is we're going to leave this ratchet there just so it gives it a little bit of weight to keep it at TDC. We're gonna take our torque wrench, we're gonna turn it on. We're gonna make sure this is nice and taut right here up top. Take our torque wrench, we're gonna go down to 20 foot-pounds, and we're gonna snug these bolts. We're gonna start with the intake bolt first. I'm gonna use my counter hold wrench. We're using a 24 wrench, even though it's, a, it's actually a little bit smaller. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna snug it, and counter hold it. The reason why I wanna counter hold it is because I don't wanna have the cam locking plate do any of the work. So let me go ahead and Get this torque down to 20 foot-pounds. Okay, we'll do the same for this. This is just to prevent any further movement. All right, I'm gonna take the plate off. Now that initial 20 foot-pound snug is gonna keep the cams aligned with each other. Again, we're gonna make sure we're bottomed out at TDC on the crank, which we are. And now we're gonna go to 60 foot-pounds up top here. Now, one thing to note is that we should, in theory, actually be removing this TDC pin right here because we don't want to risk damaging it, but we're going to leave it in place. We're just going to do a good job of counter holding this. I'm going to go up to 60 foot-pounds. 60 foot-pounds. Should we go more than 60? Nah. I think spec is 55. We're already going past that. All right, so we've tightened the two camshaft bolts down. I just wanna make sure the plate, well, first thing I'm gonna do is make sure the crank is still bottomed out, which it is, against the TDC pin. Now I'm gonna make sure this plate goes in. We're gonna have to wiggle it a little, which is normal. Okay, that goes in. And that goes in, we're in time. Nice and snug, perfect. Now I'm gonna put some assembly lube over on the chain here. Kind of get it all into where the gears go. We're gonna rotate the engine a couple times. 
Okay, right. so when we rotate the engine over, there's going to be no compression, and that's because there are no spark plugs in yet and no injectors. And this is a direct injection engine, so those are actually holes going right into the cylinders. So it's just going to be a nice, easy turnover. And then once we do three hundred, uh, sorry, 720 degrees, we're going to put the TDC pin back in and, and make, make sure, sure we're still lined up. Exactly. I don't hear any valve connections with pistons, so we're good. It's timed. We won't know if it's half a degree off, but it's not. All the timing tools were in perfectly. And now he's going to bring it around to top dead center on cylinder one again. So you can see the lobes are kind of coming towards each other at 45 degrees. So what I'm going to do now is put the TDC pin in the back. Make sure it's fully threaded in. Okay, fully threaded in. Now the counterweight on cylinder one, on and the crankshaft. Go shaft. until it stops. We go until it stops. Okay, there we are. All right, and you can see that the lobes on cylinder one are facing each other. 45 degrees. Let's make sure this goes in. Now let me get my, Just again. Give it a little wiggle. We're gonna have to wiggle it. It's never perfect. Just a little wiggle, wrong way. That's in. And that's in. Done. We're good. We are timed. Okay, so now timing cover has to go on. So we've cleaned out our uh, VVT solenoid with some brake cleaning and stuff like that. We used some compressed air to make sure there's no debris in there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a little bit of oil in these little areas right here, just to make sure that on initial startup, we got good oil ready to go in case this thing activates. And we're using regular engine oil here instead of assembly lube because assembly lube is very thick and viscous we don't want things getting stuck yeah so i'm just gonna put a little bit of oil on here you should definitely wear gloves bud i know i know or a little like oiling gun little can yeah that would be ideal we just don't have it you have it but i do not yeah and we made three trips already getting tools that you had not <laughs> we just keep forgetting stuff. I, just, I just started laughing that sentence there what we're gonna do is we're pop gonna it pop on. it in nice and easy there it is the lube's for. Tighten it down by hand. Tighten that down. This crank pulley seal, uh, we don't know how to install it. We don't know if we have a special tool, but we're gonna try to just push it in from the front here, nice and easy. Spray the silicone. Spray a little bit on here. And hopefully it goes in without any problems. I would say maybe don't do that. Oh, going in. Going in. Uh, going in. Maybe use the dead blow. Use your dead blow hammer. Going slowly in circles. Hit the edge, the corner. And he's right, dead hammer might be a little better. Hey, uh, you know what? Actually, this might be a good idea. This might be good. What? If there's no oil in the crankcase, your turbo can't smoke. If there's no oil in the crankcase, your turbo can't smoke. So yeah, beat on it, go. That's such a fragile seal and you just beat the shit out of it. No, because I'm, I'm, making, I'm hitting it flat so that it lines up flat with the timing cover. It's flush. That's a big boy. Oh yeah, there you go. So this might work guys. It's a 36 millimeter socket. And it just so happens that it fits right around here. But we're just gonna lightly tap it in a little further. You wanna go even all around, feel it. Okay, there's a little bit of, I want a little bit of a lift coming over from the timing cover. Yeah, there's definitely a special tool for this. We don't have it. You don't? Obviously. Wait, it wasn't the screwdriver? You can see there's a little bit of a lip from the timing cover all around. It's a small spring right around the circumference of it. Yeah. You want to make sure that hasn't popped off. Because yeah, that, that. that keeps tension on the seal so it clamps down on the crank pulley. Without that spring there, there's a good chance it'll leak. So now what we're going to do is we're going to um, use a microfiber and clean the mating surfaces on the timing cover as well as on the block and oil pan. 
That is like the perfect nose arch. It's like cartoon. What? The silhouette that your nose makes. It's it's like perfectly drawn. It's, it's like an upside down peak. It's so good. <laughs> Zoom out, please. We clean everything up. We're now going to apply some gasket maker. Are there any dowel pins that go into this? There's two dowel pins on this timing cover that line it up. Are they in? Let's play a game. Spot the dowel pins. I see one there, but I don't know if that's just a one blob there. of uh, RTV. And one there. Oh, it is. It is under that blob of Shit. RTV, isn't it? Retro Terra Viscosity. That's what it means? RTV? Really tight Velcro. I thought you were going to say something else. I know. <laughs> I just realized. I just realized. What oh, smells like shit? I farted. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's so strong. It's not good, man. That is not good. Dude, I'm eating healthy, man. Thanks. I'm gonna need a stronger mask. It's doing its job. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, that looks so messy. It is messy. I'm gonna flatten it out with my finger. I'm gonna do some here, too. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to work. I wanna go on as straight as I can. And all we gotta do now is put the rest of the bolts in. There's gonna be some 13s here that we have to put in. Some more eight millimeters in the middle and eight millimeters all around here. And there's a 13 down here as well. All right guys, there is a torque spec to all these bolts as usual. But you know what? We're just gonna go ahead and tighten them by feel. We just realized that we put this cap backwards. We put it on backwards. So we're gonna loosen it, take it off. That's fine. A little bit of assembly lube, not a big deal. Doesn't have to be too tight. Here's our valve cover. We went with uh, an Illusion Blueberry and we got this, uh, or not ceramic coated, powder coated locally at a place called Brightside Customs in Richmond Hill. Was it Richmond Hill? I think it might've been Markham. No, Canada. Near Toronto. And um, yeah, so we're pretty satisfied with the color. You know, it's gonna look pretty cool. It's gonna go on like that. Uh, and what we're gonna do. Oh, it's the engine hoist. We're going to put the uh, gaskets on here and then we're gonna install. Let's do it. As you guys know, if you've been watching our other videos, this is the Gen 2 valve cover for the Gen 1 Speed 3. Yeah. This allows us to incorporate the Speed Performance Oil Breather Cap to relieve crankcase pressure. Got a nice baffle there. Baffling. Make sure it's fully bottomed out. Don't want it to fall out halfway through installation and then it gets pinched and then it's, it leaks. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of the bolts that go into the valve cover and I'm just gonna get them prepared. I'm gonna get them pushed through. There's these little grommets here. So we're just gonna go ahead and make sure they go through and overlap the seal. I'm gonna put these in first. It goes past the seal and then you make sure the seal is back in its seat. See, because if you put these on after, you wouldn't have been able to get the seal to overlap the actual bolt collar. So with this, you wanna make sure that the grommet here is over top of the collar first, and then put it into the valve cover. Put some gasket maker right here. Right here, not too much. And we're gonna put some right in these little corners here. Right there, on this side as well. Just like that. Flatten it out a bit. Just make sure, it doesn't hurt. And we're gonna take a little bit of oil, a little bit of motor oil, and just coat the VVT solenoid or the gasket on the valve cover. We'll wrap around just to make it easier to go on. And we'll put some oil also on the seal right here, just to make sure it goes on without a hiccup. Oh, look at this, guys. This is happening. This is finally happening. That looks good. Good choice of color, man. I like that. 
I really like that. Then we'll zip them down with the gun and then torque them by hand. NGK one step colder, part number LTR 7IX 116510, stock number. I'm gonna check the uh, spark plug gap here. We're gonna be aiming for 25 thousandths of an inch. I'm just gonna tighten down all the valve cover bolts nice and evenly. By hand, starting from the middle, working my way out. Then we'll do another pass. We'll do a couple of passes just to make sure they're all tight. That's it. No big deal. You know, we got this. But that much closer to maxing out the BNRS for. 450 wheel horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque sounds pretty good to me. What do you think, Julian? Sounds fantastic. All right. I'm actually curious to see what it's gonna feel like. Um, it should be, it should be. It should I have be fun. not driven fast cars. I haven't had the luxury of driving fast cars. Your car's pretty quick, man. So I, I am excited to see what it feels like to be in. Our cars aren't that far car. off. I mean, we're both front wheel drive. My car might have made a little more power than yours, but I'm still at the limit to traction. For the street, we're pretty much even. We're pretty much just as fast. On the highway, I might pull ahead, but in terms of traction, like off the line, we're the same. See that Acura right there? Eric put a turbo in it, eh? This thing's turbocharged. Check it out. Right there, you hit it right there. Look at that. You should put an air filter on that thing, eh? Eh, it doesn't need it. Look at that. So that's the BNRS4, the compressor housing. And, uh, or, like, basically, basically, that is the product of hard work. Eric basically polished that by hand with different grits of sandpaper. That was just rough cast. Look at how shiny that is. He did the same to the intake manifold. It like blew my mind. This is how, this is what happens when you're bored and you're waiting for your engine to be done. From the, from the, uh, oh. Machincha. I can't talk, man. It's just something that you have to just keep moving forward. Take it nice and slow, stay organized and. Proud of you, bud. Just build it. Well, you can be proud of me when it's running and it doesn't blow up. Okay, let's just let it, let's just keep on going. Let's get it running. Break the engine in. Start with that. Oh, we don't know. Oh, bro, we don't, he's, bro. He's, he's blushing. No, he's just fucking tired. For all we know, this thing might start up and spin a rod bearing right away. Don't even say that, man. Don't even, don't even. You know, I would have spent $8,000 for absolutely nothing. Don't say that. You're gonna jinx the engine gods. No, we did, we, we're putting it together as best we can. And all we can do is hope for the best. Spark plugs are gapped. Tight, all the bolts are tight. We're gonna put the cam position sensor in and we're gonna put the spark plugs in. Put the ignition coils in now. Ooh, starting to look like an engine. Cam position sensor is on. Position. Position. Now what do you feel like next? Water pump or fuel pump? High pressure fuel pump or water pump? Let's put the oil breather cap on. Okay, it's starting to look like a piece of art. We're gonna put the crank pulley bolt on now. Sorry, the crank pulley on now. We're gonna line up this hole with this hole right here. I'm gonna put a little bit of oil on the, pull, the crank pulley portion that meets with the seal, that mates with the seal rather just so it slips in easier. All right, just gonna put some oil on there. I don't know if you can see that. Should be good enough. Now we wanna make sure that the mating surface where the friction washer goes is free of debris and clean. So I'm gonna put a little brake clean on here and just make sure there's no oil on the surface. The hole, lining up with the hole in the bottom of the timing cover. We just wanna make sure, we, okay, so don't forget the friction washer has to go on there. Now we're gonna put this on. I just wanna make sure it goes on nice and smooth. I don't know why it's, it's a little dirty. There's no oil on the uh, surface, right? There we go. We're bottomed out now. When you oiled it, did you put, there's no oil on the actual surface of the- No, uh, that's why I wiped it. This is where we get our spare bolts. That's the old blown block. It's got a hole right there and a bigger hole on the opposite side. Right there, you can see right through the side of the block in there. That is the old block. Old head, old timing cover. So these are all just free fasteners, basically. That's all it's good for. And the engine lift points right here, which we will take. So we found a bolt that works. We're just gonna use that. We're gonna get the uh, brand new crank pulley bolt in there.
We got the bolt in holding. 75 foot pounds is not gonna break this bolt. Don't do that, Julian. <laughs> okay, let me just make sure. 75, all right. Now we gotta do it, go an additional 90 degrees. So for those of you who have been asking what we use to counter hold the crank pulley while tightening it, this is the tool we use. It is a uh, Land Rover special tool. The part number is LRT-12-093. And um, not sure how much it costs, but um, we're using it and it's been working fine. We just put some bolts here, some regular bolts through with some uh, nuts just to hold it in place. And how this works is it basically counter holds the, um, the crank pulley. So someone would hold it like this while someone would tighten it the additional 90 degrees. When we tighten it the additional 90 degrees, we wanna make sure we remove the bolt so we don't break it. So we've marked down 90 degrees. You see a little red mark there, and then you see a red mark on the pulley itself. And we're just gonna move it basically from here to here. It's gonna go an additional 90. Okay, so just hold it. Mm -hmm. Okay, still gotta go a little more. Just a little more. Okay, let go. Perfect, it's exactly 90 degrees. All right, so we put the TDC pin back in and we've bottomed the crankshaft out against it. On cylinder one. On cylinder one, counterweight is hitting it. And what that allows us to do is position our crank position sensor into the correct position. We verify that the crank pulley did not move. You can see that the hole lines right back up with the hole in the timing cover. And basically what's gonna happen is we're gonna install this like so, and we're gonna put the 20th tooth right in the middle of the sensor. You'll notice that uh, these holes are elongated, they're ovalized, so it allows you to position the sensor up or down like that, so you can center it against the 20th tooth. Okay. Bingo, bango. Right in the middle with the crank shaft at TDC. All right, so we're gonna get some dielectric grease here, silicone lube. We're just gonna put a little bit on the water pump uh, seal, O-ring, just like that. It's gonna make it easier to slide in to the block. Put the water pump in nice and easy like so. Make sure it's clean in here. I'm just gonna wiggle it in. There. Put the eight millimeter bolts in by hand first. All right, let me grab my gun. Cool, and the torque spec for this one is by hand. 500 foot pounds. I believe we are gonna put the water pump pulley on. Nicely cleaned out by Julian himself. That's not going anywhere realistically. Next step is to pop on the new thermostat, which is gonna go right here. We'll take out our hardware that we've pre-tapped into the block. Here's a little tip for you. If you drop something, follow it with your eyes. Otherwise, there's a good chance it'll be lost forever. Wanna make sure this is nice and flat and clean and all that good stuff, you know what I'm saying? All right, sounds good. This is like that game when you're a kid, the square holes and circular holes. It's not gonna leak, is it? If it leaks, it leaks. That's not a good if idea. If it breaks, it breaks. If it throws a rod, it throws a rod. If it spins a bearing, it spins a bearing. At the end of the day, it's night time. It's true. It's true. You make a good point, my friend. I like it. I like your optimism. You get it in there with a gun. It's a plastic housing. Maybe don't go too hard to spin. And then just give it a little snugness with my hand. High pressure fuel pump time. All right. What the hell is this? Goes like this. Yeah, I mean, shapes are hard, man. Okay, so that's all tight. This is all tight. Now we're gonna put the um, high pressure fuel pump bucket into here and then we're gonna install the high pressure fuel pump on top. 
after cleaning it with brake clean, he's gonna re-oil it. Yeah, just give it a touch of assembly loop. It's gonna be a while before we start it. Okay, bucket's going in. Just like that, perfect. No big deal. High pressure fuel pump now. I'm just gonna reinstall the pipe, the inlet pipe. Put a little bit of dielectric silicone lube on there just so it goes in easier. You can see we have our upgraded stainless steel filter in there. All right, we're all cleaned up. Perfect. These don't have to be tight, they're very small. Uh, and now the cam is basically pushing up on it. See that? The cam is pushing up yeah. on it. So we have to tighten the fasteners very evenly. I bet you the torque specs like 12 foot pounds. B fart. Hmm? The B fart. What's that? 12 foot pounds? It's a strong ass B. Where? It's I'm a strong B ass. Did you fart? No, I'm saying it's a B fart in terms of how much energy you have to put into turn. Never mind. <laughs> Hopefully somebody gets your joke, because I don't. You know what, it's okay, man. Sometimes, you know, you just have to accept that you said something dumb and just let it out there in the universe. Did you just fart again? Let it marinate. I haven't farted yet today. I'm starting to feel like I want to. I think that's good, man. We tightened tighten that down by hand. Nice. What's next? Uh, let's do the injectors. We're gonna reuse the cork sport injector seals. We're gonna try it out. Because they're damn expensive, I don't want to buy new ones. So I'm just uh, cleaning out the uh, cork sport injector seals because we're going to be reusing them. You'll notice that these are actually really stout seals. Right? That's what you see after used, after being used for a little while. No leakage. It contains all of the pressure inside the cylinder just around this uh, sealing surface here. So these things are solid. So we're going to try reusing them because they're expensive and uh, hopefully they don't leak. These are our fuel injectors. We got them serviced and flow matched. We had a total of eight injectors, one from the blown engine and one from the uh, used CX-7 engine. So we got them all serviced, all eight of them, and we took them to Toronto Injectors. Uh, it's a place that's local to us, so we decided it'd be easier just for us to get it done locally. Um, and they flow matched everything, cleaned everything up. They put stainless steel filters in there for us. And uh, we're gonna go ahead and put them in now. So we're gonna take our cork sport injector seals and just pop them onto the injectors first. A lot of people think that these have to click on, but they actually just push on like that and that's it. There's no clicking noise. Am I enthusiastic or am I just being chill? You know what, you're being exactly how you need to be being. Thanks, man. No worries, bud. Look at that, look at that. Look at what we accomplished today. Yeah, we did a lot today. It's a slow process, guys. We're doing once a week of work because we're super busy with other stuff. So we're only able to get one day a week in, but we're taking you guys along for the ride. So hopefully you guys are enjoying it so far. We're gonna take our crow's feet now and we're gonna secure them onto the injector. Like so. Again, there is a torque spec, but we're just gonna go by feel. Good clamping force to keep all that boost in the cylinder. That's what we're all about. Ah, oh, you bastard, focus. Torque spec on this is three oogs and an ah. <laughs> T40. There's a torque spec, we'll look it up. But we'll look it up after we tighten it by hand. Because, you know, going by feel is what we do. Feel it out. Cut to the clip of the motor blind. Going by feel is what we do. And it you wind up in places that you would not expect sometimes. It's always a nice surprise. Like on the back of a flatbed. Yeah. Going home, Googling engines. Actually, no, I just went on Instagram and somebody... Shout out to Mark Gizmonti. Gizmonti? I don't even know how to say his name. Screw that. I'm not going to put that in. <laughs> <laughs> what, you accidentally put that in? <laughs> <laughs> we should just put that in for the sake of putting that in. Shout out to Mark. Shout out to Mark, who uh, knows a guy named Paul, who apparently Paul, oh, shit, I'm gonna break that shit. Starts to really good engine for us. Come on, do you think 2000 PSI can push that out? Depends on how many square inches there are. Not really, it's a small tip of the injector. Yeah, so it's fine. Okay, so here's the fuel rail right now. It goes like this onto the injectors. We have a brand new fuel pressure relief valve. So we're gonna actually change that. We weren't having any issues with this one, but since we're in here, we might as well go ahead and change it. 
The sensor, we're not gonna change. We're gonna leave that on there. I don't even know if it comes separately or not. And all we're gonna do is just clean it out. Just make sure there's nothing in there and then we'll install it. Dielectric grease, just a little bit, silicone grease, whatever, silicone lube. Just, just a little bit on the uh, blue O-ring, not on the injector inlet, because I don't want to have any problems. Okay. Clearly, we're having problems. I took some force to pop them all in. Oh, that one's in. Okay. All right, we're in. Come on, check it out. You want to put it in so that it doesn't rip or tear those blue O-rings. So feel it out. And then over here is where the pressure release valve is gonna plug in, the new one. How long do you think this engine's gonna last once it's running? To beat the record of the other one, it just has to make 400 horsepower twice. <laughs> yeah, we only made it once. And it's a 10 mil. 10 millimeters of pure bliss. A brand new fuel pressure relief valve is going in. We had to transfer over the washer from the old one because the new one did not come with one. That should be okay. Making sure it's clean in there. Perfect, what I like to see. And we're just gonna thread it in. The 17 millimeter open-ended wrench. And we're just gonna tighten it by feel once again. I don't know how tight to go on that one, but. Sure. Yeah, that's good. What's going on guys? Week three. It's now week three. We've got everything together here. Valve covers on, coils are in, fuel rail, injectors, knock sensor, thermostat, water pump, crank pulley, crank sensor, all that kind of good stuff. We transferred over the uh, exhaust manifold studs back onto the head here. There's a total of 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now I'm just uh, getting the PCV plate ready. This is a Damon Motorsports PCV plate. Um, we used to have a lot going on here with dual vented cash cans and all that kind of stuff, but we're gonna simplify the setup this time around because I think the issue that we were originally having with the BNRS4 turbo smoking was actually not crankcase pressure related. Initially it was, but after we sorted some stuff out and talked to a few people, talked to Brian, we think the actual problem is going to be with the fuel, sorry, the oil pressure being too high being delivered to the turbo itself. So we're gonna simplify everything, get a little more room in the engine bay, and then we'll talk about um, the oil feed line to the turbo later. Here's the blowout engine. Just taking some hardware from it. Okay, looking pretty clean here. New seal, nice. And uh, of course, this is a billet piece because uh, Eric watches a lot of Rob Dom and everything's billet. Sure. It's windy today, man. Yeah. That's what the dead cat's for. That's what the dead cat works. Can you hear that? Is that loud? Hopefully not. Just tightening all the bolts nice and evenly. You picked a good uh, color, too. Black? No, you're matching my Mastercraft uh, air compressor, bud. Guys, this is gonna be cool. Can't wait to get this thing done, get it running. We apologize for um, taking so long because I know you guys wanted to see this video, but. Why are you apologizing? You're putting money into building an engine. I know, you I know. And you, you owe anyone nothing. You owe everyone nothing. You owe everyone. Right. Okay. No one owes you. I'm having a stroke. <laughs> so now we're just tightening it down, tightening it down evenly because we don't want to have any oil leaks. So I called Damon Watersports. Um, Matt at David Motorsport, shout out to him. He sent me these two plugs because we wanted to simplify things. We used to have a 90 degree coming off, going to a second catch can, and we used to have this piece right here. It's a higher cracking check valve that opens up at a higher pressure, and we had that just sitting right in the middle here. So there was just way too much going on in our opinion just to try and solve a smoking turbo issue, which most likely is gonna be the turbo uh, oil feed pressure being too high. So we're gonna sort that out, hopefully, and uh, we'll take you through it. I'm guessing you did this to make it easier to crank the engine over? Yes, <laughs> that's exactly why I did those little holes there. <laughs> Genius. All right, I'm just gonna clean off the surface a little bit here. And I'm gonna do it in a way where I try to minimize the amount of debris going in here. So I'm gonna face it down, let gravity do its thing. Just a razor blade. Get rid of some of this old gasket. Okay. 
These coolant lines here, we haven't altered them in any way ever since we removed the blown engine. So, But one of them is put on backwards. Yes, this one is put on backwards. If you watch our six board installation video, you'll see that we actually flipped this line. This is supposed to go by the radiator. And that's to clear the auxiliary fuel injectors and fuel line. Yeah, the fuel rail for the six port. A little bit of brake cleaner just to make sure there's nothing in these lines here. I wonder if a hose would work. The port in the head is also clean. As you can see, we got a brand new seal gasket there. Just gonna start them off by hand. And then we'll tighten them all down nice and evenly. So here we have the Damon Motorsports EGR Delete Kit. And we're gonna go ahead and install it now. So first, what we need to do is, this has to thread into here. And what we're gonna use is the Permatex thread sealant. We've got a new seal in here, a new EGR seal. Gasket rather, and uh, we're gonna go tighten this up. Let me check it by hand. Oh, shit. is this a 12? <laughs> it's a 12. Not a good idea. Wait a minute. This is an 11. The nice thing about this is that you're gonna be able to see the turbo nice and clearly. The good thing with that is it's so accessible from the top, you can see if it leaks. Yeah, you're right. And you really don't want to like break anything. Okay, yeah, that's good enough. Guys, high pressure fuel line. This one's fairly new. Um, we're gonna go and install that from the fuel rail to the high pressure fuel pump. Can't wait to make boost, can't wait to see. I just can't wait to drive this thing and feel the rawness of it, you know? That's what I like about the Mazda speeds. They're so raw. That's what I like about them. They feel good. They're not the fastest, but they're, you know, they're, they're, they're punchy. They're really punchy. Would you say it's gonna be raw like sushi? I don't know what it's gonna be like, but it's gonna be like fun. feel like sushi. Get, get, get your head out of my way. In order for us to uh, install this high pressure fuel line, we didn't realize we gotta take these bolts out, the bottom bolts here for the um, this coolant block. So let me just take these off. Oh, there's no coolant leaking out, nice. Duh. All right, so I got the bolts. Let's put a little bit of dielectric grease on this blue O-ring. So we're gonna slide that in first. It's crazy how small that hole is, eh? That's not stock. They wouldn't do that. Without ripping that O-ring, there we go. Okay, put the bolts in. Doesn't have to be too tight. This is a 19. Just wanna make sure this is all tight. That should be okay, but a little more just in case. Okay, that's good. I'm gonna pop the eights in there now. Once the bottom here, slowly but surely, snowball is coming back. Cleaning off the alternator. So the alternator is full of fire extinguisher dust. Kinda. Just gonna give it a little wipe. It's an old alternator. We use all our oily rag here just to give it some shine. When do we ever clean an alternator? Might as well do it now. First time for everything. Just trying to get rid of some of that fire extinguisher powder that's on here. Okay guys, we got the AC compressor on. Uh, you'll notice there's a missing bolt here. That's because whoever took the AC compressor off basically sheared the bolt off, so the bolt is stuck in there. Yeah, and basically when we got the block, the bolt was like sheared off inside there, so. Unfortunately, buying a used block, you never know what, what the previous life of the block was. In this event, we have a sheared bolt in the AC compressor's mounting hole, but three bolts for now. Um, I think three should hold. Okay, now I gotta check it by hand. I'm gonna make sure there's no debris in the turbine housing. You can see we ported the thing out like crazy to try to solve some of that boost creep we were having. Okay, so the engine is down. We got the engine. We got it on some uh, four by fours. We got some blocks of wood under there. 
And we're gonna put the transmission on, but before we can do that, we have to put the clutch and flywheel on, and to do that, we need to put the rear main seal on, so. And before we even do that, we gotta put the pilot bearing on. Don't forget, this is from a CX-7, this crankshaft. So uh, these things don't come with pilot bearings because they come with automatic transmissions. So we gotta push the um, pilot bearing in, and we have a brand new one. So let me get, let me clean this hole out a little bit. This is a brand new pilot bearing, guys. You can see there's very small needle bearings in there. And it comes pre-greased, so we don't have to grease it. But now I'm wondering... What direction does it go in? What direction does it go in? I'm gonna have to Google that. That seems important. I think it goes in like this. Because that looks like a seal. It looks like a, a little seal on this side here. What's right? this side look like? There's no seal on this side. So by having this press in all the way, you eliminate the potential for the grease to escape on the input shaft. So okay, so it turns out the seal faces outward. We checked on the old crankshaft that Eric has from uh, the blown speed. Blown speed. Okay, so we have the old crankshaft here. And the seal, ah, my knee. Ah, the seal points outward, so we're gonna do that. So to make this go in just a touch easier, I've cleaned out the crankshaft hole. I'm putting just a small amount of oil just on the sleeve here. A 14 millimeter socket will actually work perfectly to just hammer it in. We got a little bit of oil on there. Now the seal side is facing the transmission. Okay, this is gonna, it is a tight fit, I'll tell you that much. It is a tight fit. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with a, with a mallet. I don't wanna cause any damage here, so I'm gonna start with a mallet right here. Oh, it looks like it's going in. Nice. So I'm gonna bottom it out with the mallet. And looking at the other crankshaft, it doesn't bottom out all the way into the hole in the crankshaft, but it dips slightly below the ridge. So we're just gonna grab this socket and just kind of go a little further in there. I might have to use a real hammer. I don't know how far to go in with this. Maybe that's good. Maybe stop there. Maybe I'll take a look at the other crankshaft. The bearings, right? Let's take a look at the other crankshaft. How deep do we gotta go? That is the question. Clean some of this gunk off real quick. Just to see. It goes in a little deeper actually. The rear secondary seal. It says Ford on it. Rear main seal is going on. And the rear main seal on, so we're gonna apply some gasket maker right here into the bottom groove. We do not want to have this leak. I'm gonna spread it with my finger. Get it in there. Oops. Spread it out now. And that groove. So, do not remove the white donut. It's used to keep the seal open so that I can close on the crankshaft evenly. You push it onto the shaft, the white thing pops out. And then it gives you a torque pattern. It's kind of like a star. It's like one, two, three, four, five, six. And then eight Newton meters is your final torque. So let's give this a shot. Make sure it's clean. This has to stay on. This white piece goes on top of the crank, right? Like so. Make sure it's. Okay. Goes on like this. Bottoms out like that, and now I'm gonna push the seal on. Just spin it a bit. Make sure the holes. Okay. Nice. I can't tell. Leave it there, leave it there. Get the leave, hardware. Leave it there? Yeah, get the hardware. 
Okay. Like, don't don't pull it off yet. But did this know. thing bottom out Let's at the bottom? Let's get the bolts. There? That did, look. I can see the seam right here. It's right did against I put the, enough? It's against the block. Did I put enough gasket maker on the bottom? Uh, we'll find out when it uh, pisses oil all over your flywheel. Eight newton meters. By the time you watch it, that food will be Eric's shit. Look at that, torquing. That's a human door crunch. Definitely more than eight newton meters, I'll tell you that much. Again, not, don't need to go too tight. Can't wait to get this thing back in the car, man. Pull it out? Pull it out. Just pull this out? Yeah. No sh wait, first you need to, um... I'm kidding. Jesus. I'm kidding. What is this? It's, uh, it's like, it's like felt. Why is like that there? Arts and crafts store. Why is that there? So they can save money and take a look at the old seals. Thing. Yeah, it's just to soak up any oil that makes it through the shitty seal that they gave you. Completely fine. I'm just worried. It's spinning completely fine. Week four, back again. Slowly getting things done. Here's the engine, rear main seal is on. Um, here's our clutch. We decided to go, well we're gonna retain what the, the clutch setup that we had previously before the engine blew, which was a stock clutch. Okay, there's still quite a bit of life left in it. It's got about 40,000 kilometers on it. We just finished cleaning it off. And we've got a stock pressure plate, obviously. Um, we've got a little bit of hot spots on this Fidanza lightweight flywheel here. Um, these uh, face plates here, actually, you can replace them without replacing the entire flywheel. But um, due to money constraints right now, we're just going to put this back in as is, along with the stock clutch. We're not going to upgrade the clutch right now. And um, if it slips, we'll go from there. But right now, due to money constraints, we're just going to have to put this back in. And we just want to get the car up and running, right? So we've got new flywheel bolts. And we're going to be reusing the pressure plate bolts. We cleaned everything off pretty well. Yeah. We obviously want to make sure the, the mating surfaces here are as clean as can be. And then once this is torqued down, we'll spray it with brake clean again to get any finger grease off of it. I can't wait to turn the boost up again. Soon. And not blow the engine. Soon, soon, soon. Remember, to be twice as good, we just have to make 400 horsepower twice on this engine. Yes. I'm just gonna get this sort of like snug with the gun a little bit, not fully torqued, just in a star pattern. There is a torque spec on this, let's go find it right now. Okay guys, so we're gonna start off with 60 foot-pounds here and we're gonna work our way up to about 120. And the minimum is 111 and the maximum is 118, so we're gonna, we're gonna go slowly here. So we're gonna follow the tightening sequence, and I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now for you. I got my torque range set to 60. Now Julian's gonna counter hold it. Three, four, five, six. Let's try that one more time. Make sure I didn't miss anything. Kind of, you know what? As long as, like the, full, full as, long as it's the start pattern, you're good. So like the full torque, man. We'll start with 110. 110. That is scary. That is, that is kind of scary. <laughs> Jeez. Oh my gosh. I think we're just going to stay at one time, guys. Let's just stay at one time. That's okay. too much. Hang on. Did, did we miss one? Did we miss one? Check all of them now. Make sure they're all at the same. That should be tight enough. They're brand new bolts. They each have their own little version of the thread locker stuff on it. Okay, that's, that's good. Enough. That's not coming off. See that? Making sure it goes on smoothly, freely. All right, so we're gonna put a little bit of grease on the input shaft here, the transmission, to make sure the clutch can move in and out freely. Very little because you don't want it to fling up and get in between the clutch and the friction material. Uh, blip, 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 blip. Bup, bup. Clean those blinds. 
making sure the splines are free of debris. Okay, so there's grease on the input shaft now. Just a little bit, we don't want to put too much. If we put too much, centrifugal force will cause the grease to get spewed out and all over the friction material, as Julian mentioned earlier, but I'm mentioning it again because I, I didn't realize that I already mentioned it, but we're going to talk about it anyways. Let's make some boost. So just uh, let people chime in on how centripetal force is the actual real force and the fictitious force is centrifugal, which is just counteracting centripetal. Is that true? Yeah. Centrifugal doesn't exist. It's a fictitious force, but technically it's used to describe the direction that things fling away from the center. The acceleration is actually towards the center. Yeah, yeah right? That's just gonna be cool, eh? Fucking physics, man. There's no debris on it. I'm trying to avoid touching the face of the disc. Alright, transmission side. We're gonna use the clutch alignment tool. This is gonna go on like so. Like that. It's gonna slide into the pilot bearing. And we're gonna pop the pressure plate on. Make sure the surface is clean. Line this up. Line it up. Okay. Let's go to a top one. Let's grab another one. Okay. All right. Okay. Let me take a look at the sequence now and the torque spec. Pressure plate tightening order. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six. And it says here, tighten in a minimum of two steps, ending with 19 to 24 foot pounds. So go to 10 and then go to 24. Problem is my torque wrench doesn't go that low. So I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it all by hand. And then we're gonna do the final torquing to 25 foot pounds. We're gonna do 25 foot pounds. Actually, you know what? We'll just do it by hand. We'll do them all by hand. Cause 24 foot pounds is barely anything. I think we'll be fine by doing it by hand, hand tight, by feel, following the proper sequence. Let's do it. Perfect. We're just slowly snugging these the, um, the pressure plate down in a star pattern. So just going, going slowly until it fully bottoms out and then we'll, we'll, final, we'll do the final torque on it. So as you can see, I'm all going opposite. Nice and easy until it fully bottoms out. And obviously you wanna make sure the dowels are fully lined up. I saw a pretty cool movie on Netflix the other day. What one? With uh, Christopher Walken, King of New York. Have you seen that one? Uh, I came up on my feed, I haven't seen it before. It's from the 90s yeah. and pretty good. I like Christopher Walken, he's pretty badass. So now we're gonna go by hand because the torque spec, my torque wrench does not go as low as 24 foot pounds. I'm gonna do it by hand. Let's see how it goes. I need you to counter hold it. Okay, he's gonna counter hold it. All right, bud. Okay, so now we're gonna have to mate the transmission onto the engine. So, we're gonna get some transmission bolts ready. And because the engine's on blocks right now, the minute we lift the transmission up onto this, it's gonna wanna tip. So we we're gonna, use a we're pump gonna jack. dump this on a pump jack. Yeah. Because we don't have a transmission jack. We're just gonna, we're gonna wing it. This long one goes here. Okay, so we managed to get the transmission onto the engine. Eric's just putting the bolts in by hand. We just lifted it up onto the pump jack. And right, wheeled it towards the engine. Pushed it down. Made it to the input shaft onto the flywheel, or the pressure plate, or the clutch disc. But uh, it's on. It's on. Okay. We're tighten it all down. Now we're just gonna put it on the crane before we drop that jack, because the whole thing's gonna wanna go. I cannot wait to get this thing running. It's not really about being the fastest for me either, you know? It's about having fun. That satisfaction you get when you when boost kicks in and you just get lunged back in your seat and your car sounds good and you you, tight, you know that you tighten every bolt and you see people looking, people driving, people looking. You think you tightened every bolt. And people Take looking and me. going, wow, that's, there's a lot of oil coming out from under that car, man. That's what happened when I, my turbo was smoking a lot and hopefully we can sort that out. We can call the car the octopus and it's your little inking. So we've got the transmission housing bolts snug, not fully tightened. We'll finish tightening them when we have the thing in the air. Now I think what we're gonna do is um, we do need to raise the car. We need to take the half shafts out so we can actually put the tranny in and then we're gonna slide the half shafts back into the tranny and go from there guys. We're slowly getting this thing put together. The car is jacked up on stands. Jacked up. And what we're gonna do now is 
separate the tie rod ends from the knuckles, which will give us some play. We're gonna loosen the axle nuts, take the shafts completely out. We might even have to separate the lo lower control arm ball joint from both knuckles, so we can have some wiggle room of the knuckle. And then pop the engine in, put it on the mounts loosely, and then we'll slide the shafts back in and go from there. Welcome to the Wannabe Tuner's Garage. Fortunately, we charge really high labor rates. Okay, we don't work on anybody else's car yet. We're not there yet, guys. I know a lot of people have been asking if I could help them or we could help them. We just don't have the time right now. Um, we got full-time jobs. We don't mind answering questions. We don't mind helping you out through social media, but for us to actually take on full-time other jobs from people, it's, it's we just can't right now. We would like to have our own shop eventually where we can kind of do that kind of stuff on the weekends when we have more time, but we just don't have the um, financial stability yet. Maybe if the channel gets big enough and YouTube starts giving us, you know, decent amounts of money, then uh, who knows, maybe one day we'll have our own shop. Right now, this is our shop, right? It's a nice little homestead garage and we have fun. That's, that's our goal with this channel is just to have fun and hopefully you guys can enjoy the fun that we have through the fun we have by you being able to do things that are fun. Would you say this is fun? I would say this is pretty fun. Cool, okay, cool. You know okay. what else is fun? What? Getting it done? Yeah. It rhymes. Okay, so the axle nuts are, well, 24 millimeter seems to fit. No, it's 32 millimeter. 32? 32 millimeter for the axle nuts. Oh, 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 oh. oh it's a 32. It's a 32 in a 24 slot. He got me. That son of a Speed Performance wants you to tighten the head studs in a way where you're, you're doing multiple passes and loosening. So you're doing like 35 foot pounds in sequence, loosening, 35 foot pounds in sequence and loosening. You're doing it like a total of like three times. But we didn't realize on the final one that it's, it's lucky that we forgot to put the, the, the Yeah, it was, dowels, it was unscrewing the studs further. Because yeah. whenever, every time we loosened the nuts off to seat the threads, as they recommend, the stud was getting loose. So what we decided to do is take it back off because we had forgotten to put the dowels in, the head dowels for the block. So luckily we forgot to put them in because it actually made us realize that every time we loosened off the nuts for the head studs to seat the threads, it was loosening the studs. So what we ended up doing was loosening everything off, putting the dowels in, tightening the threads, on the studs into the block, doing like 35 foot pounds and loosening it, and then having to re hand tighten the studs because they would come loose when you loosen it off. And then we did a final pass to 70 foot pounds. But I think we actually ended up going to 72 foot pounds because, you know, it is what it is. So it sounds like when I've had a lot of garlic. What is this? Let's keep that separate. It was already loose from the last time we took it apart. All right, so now basically we're we're putting the engine in. We'll take this uh, power steering cooler line and we're gonna lay it down on the floor and try not to step on it. Actually, you know what? You should replace those hoses, eh? You know what? They are kind of cruddy right now. I'll, I'll, I'll eventually uh, got, like, do a Damon Motorsports uh, power steering cooler kit where it completely eliminates that line. So it actually, the front mount intercooler core actually looks good and not obstructed by that line. Yeah. We'll wait for that. We're not going to yeah. do that anytime soon. So that, yeah, because uh, they are a little cracky. Yeah, but, let's, uh, let's give you an engine first, you know? Let's, yeah, let's start with the basic. Let's start with the engine. We've got a lot of room to work here. A lot of room for activities in here. Look at this. Bye bye, JBR. I'm gonna clean that little area out because it's kind of dirty. Get all that dirt build up. Getting in there. Side mounts here, the motor mounts, the Damon Watersports motor mounts are the best. Uh, highly reviewed. Best reviews for motor mounts. Okay, so that's why we wanted to go with them. We had the JBR Trilogy in here, but we wanted to get the best possible everything, you know, comfort, performance, all that kind of stuff. So everybody's saying Damon Motorsports the way to go. Now, with the rear mount though, the Cork Sport design seems like an awesome design, which is why we went with that one. So we're gonna try these mounts out and we're gonna let you guys know how, it, how, how much better it is over the JBR Trilogy. Honest answers, honest reviews. We're gonna get this set up. 
Everything's gonna go on loose until the engine is in. And then we'll tighten everything once everything lines up nicely. I like that you have a lot of adjustment there. Those slots. Yeah, we can move this around quite a bit. Okay, quick update. We managed to line up the transmission side. The transmission mount is loosely in. We just use the jack and a four x four to just lift up the transmission side. Um, because the differential is completely open, that's some transmission fluid. Don't worry about that. We're gonna do a whole transmission flush. Why are you looking at me? I don't know, man. Why are you staring at me, huh? Stare at the car, okay? I'm not the highlight of this video, okay? The vehicle is. I'm just a man. <laughs> Next scene, yeah, film me tightening this. <laughs> so, we got we got everything loose, guys. We got transmission mount is loosened. It's everything's just in place. We can actually, you can see it moving, like the engine can move on the mounts. Everything's loose, right? See how we can wiggle that nicely? You know what's funny? We've been filming like all of our car mods for so long that I forget what it's like for us to work on our cars without having the camera. Yeah, because we, we always film. It takes now. longer because now it's, you grab the camera and you kind of film each part, but like. It takes we, longer. We used to just like sit up all night, just. Have fun. Installing shit and getting drunk. Now it's just kind of like. Now it's like we're sharing. Now, now it's like we're kind of documenting. Instead of holding a beer, I'm holding a camera. What's going on guys, we're back again, week number five. Okay, so for the Cork Sport rear mount, we had to loosen both side mounts, uh, put it back on the crane, and kind of shimmy things, and then tighten that rear mount first to get everything to, to line up nicely and straight. So the engine's sitting perfectly straight now, it's all good, everything's tight, and the starter just went on, and now it's time to do the rest of everything else. Slowly putting it together, we got all the engine in. It's on the mounts now, we had trouble lining up the rear motor mount, but, we had to loosen the transmission and passenger side motor mount, lift the transmission a little bit up while we were supporting the engine, line everything up, shimmy it, get the rear motor mount to line up, tighten that one down, then tighten the side mounts. Again, this is week five, so we're taking our time with it once every Sunday, and um, we're getting there slowly. So what we gotta do now, in order to make that custom oil feed line to the turbo, we have to basically install the turbo, the exhaust manifold, kind of loosely install the downpipe, loosely install the under route piping, just loosely install everything in that vicinity so we can figure out how to run that custom oil feed line. So let's go ahead and do that. Here's our nurse, nicely, <laughs> nicely powder coated exhaust manifold here. Got it done locally by a place called Brightside Customs. Highly recommend them, they did a great job. You guys can see some close up pictures on our Instagram account here. Did a really good job in this titanium gray finish. So let's go ahead and loosely install this for now. Let's take the stud out of the turbo there. Now I think we can rotate. Oh my gosh, I should have lowered the turbo all the way down. The reason why we need to run a custom oil feed line is because the BNRS 4s have been known to actually wear out. The bearings get damaged from uh, engine braking material with built engines. So you have to run a custom oil feed line that incorporates an inline filter. FP Red inline filter, force performance inline filter. And on top of that, to address a smoking issue that we've been trying to figure out for a very long time, we're going to be running a Turbo Smart oil pressure regulator. So that should bleed some of the oil going through the turbo back into the oil pan and sort of reduce the amount of smoke that we see. All right, so now I'm gonna put on the oil return line very loosely. Well, I'm not tightening it all the way, I'm just snugging it because again, we're trying to figure out the routing for that custom feed line. So let me go ahead and just put this on. I really hope we can make this oil feed line work without any issues here. We gotta make it so the line goes to the turbo's inlet. I'm putting the right side drive shaft back in, just so we can obviously mock up that line. Need to make sure everything is in place so we can see how to run that line. And it's likely that this drive shaft won't get in the way again, so we can put it in finally, right? Yeah. Awesome. Little transmission fluid, you said? Yeah. A little transmission fluid just to put on the area that mates up with the seal on the uh, differential. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna slowly get this in here, nice and easy. It's kind of tight, because there's this hanger bearing here that has to be placed into position. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get this in the hole, just like that, nice and easy, taking care not to damage anything. Oh, we're in. Okay, now that I have this ball joint removed, I can actually get some more penetrating fluid here. Spray a little bit of penetrating fluid on these splines. Okay, 
We got that in. So this is the under right under up the So this is the under route pump pumping. So this is the under route piping, and uh, this is going to end up going under the car. The hot side of the turbo is going to feed through, and this pipe is going to wrap around the oil pan and come up to the inlet of the intercooler right around here. And we're putting that in now because uh. when we run that custom oil feed line, we don't want to have any issues with uh, interference. Eric just uh, hit his noggin on his engine. And he's just uh -oh. rubbing away the paint. So for the custom oil feed line on the BNRS4 Turbo, uh, we needed some braided hose, dash four, um, a custom banjo bolt that will thread onto the turbo itself, a special dash four adapter that threads into the block, um, some dash four AN fittings. Uh, we've got an FP red inline filter to prevent the turbo from getting contaminated with engine break-in material since we've got a newly built engine going in. And to prevent our smoking issue that we've been trying to sort out for the past couple of years, we're gonna give the Turbo Smart oil pressure regulator a try. And this is actually why we tapped into the oil pan right here. Well, it's been about an hour now, a lot of swearing. Yeah, this was a little bit stressful guys. Okay, getting this braided dash four hose into this AN fitting, that was, that, was a painful, that was a painful time because see how this thing frays? See how it all frays up? What we do is, I'm gonna take you guys through one of these now. I wanted to try it for myself just to make sure that we got it. We decided to go ahead and cut the cork spore heat shield to make some room for the feed line for the turbo. Uh, we're gonna spiral it down, sand it down, make it look pretty. Uh, but this is what we have to go with. You know, we had to, we had to damage it. Uh, custom work requires custom cutting damage. tools. I'm gonna cut as close as I can to the zip tie. I find with tape, it likes to fray because the tape's not strong enough to hold all the braiding together. But with a zip tie, if you cut really close to it, you can actually get like a millimeter or two that protrudes, but the zip tie holds it all in place. So on that millimeter or two, that's when you would actually try to attach this and then you slowly work it on. So let's go ahead and make a cut nice and straight and nice and slow. I find the slower you cut, the better. Close to the zip tie. Now, you can actually see here that we um, got pretty close to the zip tie and there's very minimal fraying. So what we're gonna try to do now is move this over to the gap here so we can move it back just a little bit and we're gonna start trying to get our fitting on there. When installing the fitting, I find that making sure this is clean and spraying some silicone spray in there, that will actually help it a lot. Nice and clean, silicone. Don't spray the silicone on the braid, on the actual line itself. I find when you do that, it tends to you know, flake apart easier. Slowly work this AN fitting onto the actual hose. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna loosen this a bit. I'm gonna pull the hose a little bit through the vise so that the zip tie kind of comes closer to the end. And then now I'm just trying to get the lip, just the edge. I'm just using a small screwdriver. Just trying to push little strands into the fitting. Work your way around slowly. That is extremely difficult. There are special tools for this. We do not have them. The things we do, man, the things we do for boost. Ah. So slowly here, using the small screwdriver, and I'm just pushing those little strands in. Now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna loosen this just a little bit, move it a bit forward, tighten it back. What this is allowing me to do is move the zip tie a little further back and allowing me to push further on. Make sure it's, I'm pushing in and trying to straighten the strands out because I don't want them to be folded on top of each other. I want them to be somewhat straight. So a little bit of pressure to push it in just like that, right? As best as I can. This, 
is the only method that we have right now. <laughs> now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loosen it, I'm gonna spin it, and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, just try to straighten the strands out a little. Okay, just give it a little turn, like so. I'm gonna... How pissed would you be if I pull it off right now? I'd be extremely sad. <laughs> I would wonder if you were stable for committing such a crime. Just to watch pain. Okay, so we're there. Now you can take a look here, we're not fully bottomed out. Look inside, we're not fully bottomed out there. Okay, so what we gotta do is we gotta put this back in like so, tighten it up, and wiggle it, spin it. Okay, now you can see it's kinda going in. That hole tends to get compressed. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna get it bottomed out. Okay, push this out a bit. Bottomed out as much as I can. Okay, let's see. Yeah, it looks pretty good. We actually decided to swap out the V3 CHRA and decided to go back to the V2 CHRA simply because during engine break-in, we want to make sure that if there is engine braking material that gets into the, uh, the turbo, it's going to get into the lower performing turbo rather than the higher performing turbo. But if it doesn't get damaged, uh, the V2 actually, in my opinion, sounds better during spool up. So there's about a 20 to 30 horsepower difference in peak power between these two uh, based on uh, what some of the pro tuners have taken these things up to in terms of dyno numbers. But um, I actually do like the way this one sounds better. So we're gonna run that for a little while and see how it goes. So I figured since we're here, I'm gonna go ahead and drain and fill the transmission fluid. We're using the Ford Motorcraft stuff, the really good stuff that everybody uses. And we're gonna use some of their friction modifier. I got these from the dealership. It's always a good idea to drain the uh, the fluid by cracking the um, the filler plug first because if the filler plug is seized and you drain all the fluid out then obviously you can't really fill it back up so it's always a good idea to crack the filler plug first to make sure it's not seized and then go ahead and drain it I've already drained it out so now I'm just gonna go ahead and put the fluid in now to make life easier to fill this thing up this pump here from Mac tools is a really good investment uh, it just makes it a lot easier especially if you're working underneath the car because all you got to do is unscrew that fill this tube up with the fluid and just pump it in. Okay guys, so um, we jumped ahead quite a bit actually. If you take a look at where we're at, we've just been going non-stop getting this thing put back together. It's been taking a little bit of time, but we, that's why we didn't really want to bore you guys with all the, the regular assembly. Yeah, a lot of it's just kind of like, you know, connectors, routing it wires. Yeah, just putting it back putting the way you back it apart. How are you feeling, Eric? I'm excited. It's been a year, your car's coming back. I'm excited. Feel good? I'm tired. Feel happy? That we we've done so much work. Okay. Oh, yeah, we need oil. Cool, I'm excited. I'm excited for you. I'm gonna leave the uh, six port injectors unplugged for now because we're not gonna run them. We're gonna run like a, a base map right now for a while just for the engine braking. Let me think, intake's in, this is in, that's in. Basically, whatever we remove is back in. I think we're pretty much ready to start putting some fluids in. You know what I mean? Put some oil in it, let's put some coolant in it, and let's start it up right now. Come on. Okay, let's see. Five minutes. In five minutes, this thing is... No, no, hang on. I'm getting, I'm getting over ahead of myself. We're getting too far ahead. Coolant. Do your coolant because it's more complicated. You need to get pull nervous. out all that air. I'm getting nervous, man. We're going to put some oil in now, guys. We don't know exactly how much it's going to take with the balance shaft to leak. We don't know a lot right now. We don't know if we start it up, it's going to blow, or we don't know what's going to happen. We don't know if we're going to have a massive oil leak, fuel leak. We don't know what's going to happen. So. We're gonna take it in steps, guys. We're gonna put the fluid in, put some oil in, put the coolant in. Um, is your uh, powder coating of the valve cover an homage to when you blew the engine? Because engine blew? I like that. I like that a lot. You're welcome. We'll, we'll go with that. We'll All right, okay, let's put some oil in it. We've got four jugs like this. Lucas engine braking oil, SAE 30 weight. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna fill it up, run the engine for like 20 minutes, I think. People say 20 minutes. Revving it up and down, revving it up and down, right? Just to get the, uh, the piston rings to expand under with compression. You want to seat the piston rings. That's that's the whole reason you use braking oil is because it's got low detergents, and you want low detergents because you don't want to protect 
the engine ring, uh, the piston rings, you wanna have them bed in to the actual cylinder walls. So once we do that, then we're gonna drain the oil back out, change the filter, the oil filter again, and then we're gonna run the other two for like over 500 kilometers. And then from there, we should be fully broken in. They said anywhere from 500 to 1,000 kilometers. It varies, everybody's got different um, ways of doing engine braking, but realistically, you know, we're just gonna go with what we think is gonna work. I'm excited, guys. We're finally actually getting this thing back on the road. It's been a long journey, a lot of thinking and planning and... Crying. Well, it's, it's an expensive thing, so I hope there's no issues with it. I really do, because if there is, then I don't know what to do. I'll build it again. Build it again, Joanna, tired. Think about it, this thing has been... It just, it has to work. It's always been my pride to enjoy this thing. It just has to work. It just, just has to work. No we did, we, you guys seen it. We put the engine together as best we possibly could. So, let's just hope everything paid off. Oh man, that smells good. Oh my God, this is happening. This is happening. We're putting oil in the built engine, buddy. Did you put the oil drain plug back in? Oh shit. So it's gonna take a lot more. Oh, you have no balance shafts, that's right. It's gonna take more. I'm just kind of worried about when we start this thing up, like, if there's a vibration, I'm gonna get paranoid, but really it's just because there's no balance shafts. I don't know, man, I'm, I'm freaking out right now. We can add a little more oil. We'll get it to the max line. So we took the kick oil packs out, we took the spark plugs out, and now the engine can spin freely with no compression issues, as in it's not gonna have any compression. <laughs> And yeah, it's not going to have any compression because while we're priming the engine, we want to get the oil circulating. We don't want to have any sort of compression in the cylinder to act and damage the bearings. Um, because if there's anything working against the bearings, any sort of compressive forces. And since we're not starting it, the battery is going to last longer because it's going to draw less current in spinning the engine freely without any resistance. That too, because we don't have a booster. So we're going to crank the engine over. We're going to connect the battery now. And then we'll get some oil pressure. Eric's got uh, some AEM gauges here so we can monitor oil pressure mechanically. Is the ECU plugged in? Yeah. Map sensor plugged in? Map sensor's plugged in. Okay. Uh, pretty much everything's plugged in. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. You nervous, Julian? We built this engine together, buddy. Uh, the past two weeks I was kind of working, so I was yeah. busy. But uh, yeah, you know what? Me and you, for sure. <laughs> I think right now, if we turn the ignition on, we'll prime the fuel system, check for any leaks at these lines here, and if we don't see any leaks... Oh, hang on. We need to unplug the fuel pump relay, or unplug the fuel pump. No, because with these cars, you plant your right foot to the floor, and it disables the um, fuel injectors. Oh, smart. Good. Okay. All right, guys. So we're going to prime the engine now. Let's prime the fuel system first, then the engine of oil. Let's hope it all goes well. First thing I'm going to do is turn the ignition on and turn the AC off because there's no refrigerant. We don't want to have that condenser, uh, sorry, that compressor kick on because it's not good to run a compressor with no refrigerant in the system. Did you hear that? I think the fuel's making its way to the front. Okay, so I'm going to try to crank it until I see some oil pressure. Let's do this. Put to the floor on the gas and the clutch. I don't see any oil pressure. Am I supposed to see oil pressure? Is it plugged in? Yeah. Let's see if we get the oil pressure here. Okay. 35 PSI, we're good. Okay, we're good, we got oil pressure, 35. Okay, man. It's time. Oh. oh, we had something there. It's gonna happen. Something. Next crank, it's gonna happen.
coming off the manifold. Okay. I think it's just ceramic coating. If you feel vibrations in the balance, you have to leave that for sure. Good luck, I'm sucking out.